This is Infection, the Survival Podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, December 12th, 2017, episode 152. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games, bringing you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig, at Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter. Infectionpodcast.com is the website. Thank you for joining us. Uh, halfway through December, Brian, Mr. Boise Computer, how are you? Doing well. If you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, or you're more, more than welcome to go check out my blog, biteoftech.com. Also, I encourage you to go check out our website, infectionpodcast.com. On the right-hand side, we've got all the links. So if you're looking to join our Discord group, uh, you're looking to find our YouTube videos, our podcast forms, uh, our Steam group, if you want notifications of our live episodes, so you can participate in those. Um, also, uh, you know, like tune in, I think it was, was that was the one having an issue this week. Yeah, so I guess we we'll cover that real uh, And now they they had gone back to us. Oh, did they? Okay, I didn't see that response. Saying that it was a, that they know that there's an issue with the software that we use to um, handle our RSS feed, and so that is something that they're working out on their side. So, so it's not our problem. I, I I figured it was something we had changed, but it's it's something that uh, it was not us. Let's see. We we didn't do anything wrong. It's something with our software. Um, just need compatibility, something with TuneIn specifically. So, so they said they're going to fix it. Well, they're they're looking at why they said they have a lot of clients that use. I'm trying um, to think if I have another. Oh, oh the, the oh. Crummy Show. What I think would have the same. Yeah, they said they they have a lot of clients that use that software that are having issues right now. So I assume they're going to okay. do something to fix it, or or uh, Blur Blueberry will put out a patch. Okay, I did not software, see that email, so, so I appreciate you for. Uh, bring me up to date on that so if yes. you listen to the app normally it's ios uh, it's tune in on ios on android and on the computer it works fine but it's tune in on ios so if you use that normally and you can't download the show uh for the time being i guess you have to use the apple podcast app or listen on the computer um i do um apologize for the for the inconvenience unfortunately i, I assumed brian mentioned just be the week before that he'd made some changes to the website so it stops working we assume it's our issue. We find out it's not. So, um, yeah, we rolled back to what we were using before, and it still was having the same issue. So, so okay. Nick contacted them, and as they, as they said, it's it's something on either their side or just with the software. And I do want to I do want to give a shout out, out to X Bravo, who was the one who notified us on Twitter that it stopped working. So if you uh, if you use yeah. another app or another service and it stops working, please please. Please let us know so that we can we can look into yeah. it because we'll fix it if it's something on our end. So uh, and we try to maintain anyway. compatibility. I mean, th there were issues like, for instance, we use a let Let's Encrypt certificate, and really old Apple devices don't like Let's newer encrypt. certificates, yeah. kind of like Windows XP. Uh, and so, so, you know, if we have an issue like that, we'll do everything we can. I'll try to make the compatibility work as much as possible while maintaining security. But, uh, you know, if you just let us know, I can look into it and see if it's an issue that is fixable by us. Or we can, as we, as we did with this one, contact the company, have them get back to us and, uh, and figure it out, you know, so that we know that we're not doing something incorrectly on our side. Absolutely. So thank you very much. Yes. So thanks to, uh, thanks to uh, Daniel uh, X Bravo, who reached out to us to let us know, hey, your stuff's not working. We appreciate it. Yes. Um, so how the heck are you, Brian? Uh, coming up here on Christmas here in just a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, what's going on? I still got to get my wife a present. I got to order something like this week. She she won't tell me what she wants is part of the issue. Well, you've and been I married long enough to of... figure that out. Get her another PlayStation. Well, She'd love it. <laughs> <laughs> she, yeah. So and you would I can play I another game. I would, I would love I it I need another well. TV <laughs> so I could play a game. Yeah. Can you play this in the bedroom on the yeah. PlayStation in there? Yeah. I, I got... I'm gonna play some games. I got it. noobs to pwn in Call of Duty. Exactly. I think that's a great gift. She still is very. She's very consistently playing Rocket League. We played Friday night. We had a ball. It was fun. Yeah. So she. So we we played Rocket League some on Friday night, and so she was like, "I want to play," and so we figured out a way to do cross plat or I guess yeah cross platform. Yeah, it was cool. PC. They they created a group on PC, and then we were able to join into that. 
Um, we did three v threes, which was uh, which was a lot of fun. We played that for a while. Yeah. Well, she did, she loves playing it. So like every night, uh, we'll have dinner, and she's like, "All right, do you want to play a game?" I'm like, all right. Do you want not. to play a game? <laughs> <laughs> She just she's really into Rocket League. She'll she'll get a game that she really likes. And the thing about Rocket League that's nice, it's not too much of a time commitment. No, you can, you can play go a in and games. play a couple games, and you can drop it whenever you're ready to drop it. Literally, um, it's not something that says, "Oh, you have to keep playing every day to be able to maintain and whatever." Literally Sunday night, I played one game. I I was like, ah, want to play Rocket League? Did one four v four? We absolutely whooped the other team. I was like, I done. I played <laughs> I played yeah. Rocket League. We're good to go. So um, and what's nice about that is there, there's like a, a skill gap. Um, it, it's it's not the cars. There's a, maybe a slight difference in turning and, and the size of the cars and a little bit of a difference. But most of the, the skill gap, you, you see a skill gap of like this person just knows how to play the game. Like a your lot wife than you, is and that's why they're better far than superior you. than you at the game. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's weird. Sometimes like I'll do really well and then sometimes she'll do really well. I saw a lot uh, more but she is she is pretty a lot good more at it. heart. In the, in the, in oh the, yeah, she gets mad. She hates losing. Like yeah, I don't care. I, I saw like, a lot if of I lose. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. There was yeah, heart. If I lose, I'm like, whatever. You know, it's it's fun. I'm just gonna have fun. With her, like she has such a competitive spirit. She's she will kill you to win. Yes. Now, Firebomb is bringing up in the chat. Um, I'm really wanted to wear Christmas hats. Well, our Christmas show is gonna be in two weeks. Brian, you need to go get yourself a Christmas hat if you don't have one because we do need to wear this. Have for the, okay, I've got one. Remember, as well. we had last year. We had our Christmas we, hats. Yes. Okay. So we're gonna be recording the. Uh, Gadlaw's saying it's loading fine on downcasts. So, awesome. Thank you, Gadlaw. Um, which is an Android app, I believe. Um, we're going to be recording our Christmas show this week before I leave because it's the show's going to be quite limited uh, next Tuesday. And obviously, the Tuesday after will be the day after Christmas. Uh, I, I, I will not be around to do a show. It's my mother's birthday. So, I will not be there. Uh, people are going to be trapped. Nobody's going to be here. So, we'll just do a... We're going to... Good. We're going to do a best, kind of a, not a best of show. We've got a couple topics. Um, we talk about some difference between free to play, pay to play. There's some news with some Steam stuff going on with China. So we're just going to kind of cover some more broad topics and more broad gaming co uh, topics. Show may only be an hour or so, but that will be our Christmas show, Firebomb. So we'll have our Christmas hats. It will be the jolliest bunch of a-holes on this side of the, uh, this side of the nut house as, uh, what's his name? Yes. Uh, as, uh, what's his name? Uh, Chevy Chase would say. So, um, we'll have that and that'll be Tuesday and the next Tuesday we'll have a kind of a weird show, but we will get through it. And yeah, firebomb thing. Well, he'll actually watch the next two episodes. That'll be great. Um, now Brian, <laughs> I don't think you did, but I attempted to play Fortnite this week. Yes. So that, you know, there's been a lot of hype around. So did you, did you do the new mode or did you just in general play it? Uh, we tried the new mode uh, and I played a couple of games. Now, let me say something real quick here. We'll yes. talk, <laughs> this topic will be talked about on the Christmas show. It is very clear that Fortnite is a free to play game. Um, it's very, it's very evident to me and I'll, I'll leave it there because I do want to talk about that in more detail. We tried to play it Saturday night. Uh, I believe we had a we had like five or six people that were ready to play, <clears throat> and they were having some terrible, terrible server issues Saturday. It was going up and going down. It was kind of all over the place. We tried to play for a good hour, and we got into three games, and it was very similar to H one Z one. We died instantly in all of them. Um, I don't have much more to say, but my first initial impression of Fortnite it is literally the worst thing I've ever played, um, and I know that that is due to the server issues but just like with h1z1 yeah. first impressions are important first impressions matter and i had an atrocious first appearance uh first um uh first time playing fortnite it, it was it was a joke i mean it was a total yeah. unadulterated joke the games couldn't load you were just sitting in the queue it took i swear to god we spent 25 minutes trying to get everybody in the same party I would send the invites out. They'd accept it. It wouldn't. They wouldn't pop in. It was like it was like Call of Duty day one when the servers were down for for the first two and a half hours. Couldn't get in lobbies, and it. I mean, it, it was terrible. Um, and I understand the game isn't always like that, but I tried to play it Saturday night, prime time, Saturday night, couple weeks before Christmas. College kids are off school. Tried to play the game, total disaster. So I will try it again. But yeah. from what I, I mean, literally, we didn't have a so chance. I actually to play. uninstalled. I uninstalled it totally a couple weeks ago. Why is that? 
it's just not the it's not a the style of game that I enjoy playing. Like I enjoy what I enjoy about PUBG is it's somewhat realistic and I like the pace. It's not super cartoony. Um w with Fortnite, like there's people who really get into the oh, I'm going to place these things in front of me and I'm going to do all these crazy things to maintain like not getting killed. I I want to be I want to be playing I want to play it in just like a normal, like you use the environment to your advantage. You don't create the environment. So it's not just a, it, I don't enjoy that mode. And I, I see streamers do some pretty cool things with that. Like they place blocks and they're running up on top of things, but I, I enjoyed more. Like if I, if I play, what's weird is that when I play PUBG, I enjoy more of a relaxed game. Like sometimes I enjoy dropping in really fast. But when I, once you get to the mode to where you're kind of working towards the zone, like I like to have it be more relaxed and, and, and even pace. And, and Fortnite, just for me, just didn't feel like that. I never got into a pace. Yeah, and from the little bit, I played a couple solos that seemed to work all right. They still took a while to search, yeah. but then once I got in one, um, it, I wasn't impressed with the experience. Um, it was too cartoony for me. Um, and this is coming yeah. from somebody that likes games like Team Fortress 2. And the it, weapons are way too inaccurate for me personally. Like to shoot somebody, it it's just you can hardly tell. Yes, huge I, issue. I have people shooting me from such far distances where on those little sites, like I, I don't know how in the world they're aiming. Like they're just learning where those things shoot because I'm aiming down the sites. And even if I feel like it's right on them, it's not hitting them yet. They're they're getting me with uh, machine guns from farther away than a sniper rifle. So I don't know. I mean, it, there's probably a learning curve there, but it, being that I just didn't enjoy playing the first time, I just have never have gone back to try to learn it. Yeah, I um, I overall, besides the server thing, wasn't was I wasn't all impressed. I mean, it wasn't the actual gameplay itself. Once I got into the game, wasn't terrible, but it wasn't something that I was itching to play again. Um, the one of the games I got fully geared up and I was just running around and then I didn't really see anybody. And then I saw somebody and they just kind of like laser rifled me and I was just dead. Yeah. Um, it wasn't enjoyable. Um, it, it, this is going to bride. This is going to be a shock to you. Make sure you're sitting down. Yes. It was too casual. And this yeah. is coming from Mr. Ca Mr. Casual himself. It was just, it was uh, not casual. It was so arcadey that I just didn't yeah. enjoy it. It was it, too arcadey. Didn't enjoy it one bit. Yeah. And I really like PUBG. And, and it, like, PH The map said, feels really small after you yes, come from PUBG. The incredibly. map feels so small. Like, you feel like you can't get away from people. Well, I saw this thing. I was trying to figure out, I was like, God, where am I going to land? And, um, and I was, I, I placed a point on the map and it was like this town and it was like two buildings. I was like, that's the town. Like it's a named thing on the map. And there was like four buildings in a, in a little area. But then you get like six people landing yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> so it was too, it was just too arcadey. I, I just, I, it was yeah. too arcadey for me, for, for me to get into I think it. In, some of the free to play crowd, I think that they'll enjoy it. Right. I mean, it's, and it might be the age range that they will be attracting with this game that maybe enjoy that really arcadey feel. But I, I want more of a, I mean, if, if anything go more because PUBG PUBG has more of that realistic military type of feel, not quite to the Arma level. Yeah. Right. But I, I'd rather have something closer to the Arma than I would to H1Z1 or, or Fortnite. Because those are the, those are pretty much the arcade side, and then you have the uh, military simulator side of, over at Arma side. Yeah, well, you know, I want something between that, but closer to Arma. Yeah, and I think that's what PUBG is. Um, and and PH made a good point, which is an accurate statement or what I personally believe. He says Fortnite is an okay upgrade from H one Z one, but a big downgrade if you come from PUBG. And I think that is the that's the line of the night right there. I mean, that is it. That that perfectly yeah. sums up what Fortnite is compared to H one Z one, which in my opinion is a literal a literal dumpster fire um it's i think some aspects of it are better um obviously cost is a, is a i mean that's a deciding factor for a lot of people I mean, they talked about the video game awards that they were had had a point a couple of weeks ago there were there were 1.3 million people playing concurrently at, at any at one time 
So people are playing it. Free to play, of course, lends its hand to that. Um, I do think the gunplay in H one Z one's a little bit better. It, the gun. It felt yeah. like I was shooting like some weird space rifle. Like everything was just. Yeah, the, the, there's not like realistic drop. It's just yeah. a weird. Like you have to go in there and learn it. You have to play it over and over. It's like again an arcade to game it, to figure out their weird. It's like a side-scrolling shooting. arcade game. It's just kind of like weird shooting mechanics. It, it was just just very bizarre. Yeah. Um, so overall, that was my impression. The servers didn't help, but even without the servers, I just wasn't genuinely impressed by the game. And honest to God, watching all of the advertising they did at Video Game Awards, I said, okay, I find, I, you know, I need to give this thing a try. Um, and I did, yeah. and I, I just I wasn't impressed. Wasn't impressed. Do you think... Do you think that there's a AAA studio preparing to pretty much come into this market and show how it's done, but they're trying to get their engine in order? Like, cause, cause that's the thing is with this Epic and, and Unreal Engine are trying to figure out how to make the engine work well in this hundred man type of a, a gameplay that has this big, huge map, everything kind of come, converges. Uh, and Epic's having an issue with getting it to not lag in the beginning of the game, you know, which is the same thing with PUBG, uh, being it's on the same engine. Um, same thing with with H one Z one. They always have issues with a hundred players and then converging, and over time coming closer on a map. Uh, do you think that there's a AAA studio out there that's like, well, we we're going to do this, but they're pretty much just tuning their engine to make it work no. at the moment? No. Or do you think that no one else? really cares about this no one else cares because the money's not here no triple a studio activision blizzard is not going to come in and sell a game for 25 dollars. they're going to come in and try to sell a game for 60 dollars, which people are not going to buy plain and simple i am not going to spend i would not as much as i enjoy pubg well, the I content's wouldn't, not there well that, that's the thing it's i mean i'm not going to pay yeah uh, and i guess you make the argument oh well you do it with call of duty yes call of duty is <laughs> a much smaller map less players it, uh, yeah yeah <laughs> Yes, I'm mentioning. So, I mean, what, but what if they came? In, but that's what I'm saying is, what if they came in with a AAA level of game and said, "Here's how this kind of game gets done." It's not going to happen because the community is not going to jump around it. I mean, that's the thing is, people are not going to spend sixty dollars to play Activision's PUBG. It's just not going to happen. Um, so I don't do, think the do money. There's there. a chance that they'll come in with with something like their Call of Duty. They'll they'll come up with a game mode on a future release that that kind of tackles this like that says hey we have this new game mode and treat it that way to where they can then maybe release it as an expansion or something extra that comes in um perhaps keep, but keep it on that whole franchise it, possibly i think the other big thing too is these games for the most part are popular on console and obviously PUBG will get into it just released on P uh, xbox today as of right now, Fortnite and Battlegrounds are their market is PC, and third party developers still don't take PC seriously as they shouldn't because it doesn't make I mean, yeah. it just doesn't make up a decent enough it doesn't make up enough market share for them to go and invest billions of dollars into it like they do with Xbox and PlayStation. So, um, uh, Sarah's spring up a Battlefield mode. I could see maybe EA doing something like that, but the problem with EA is they'd <laughs> fill it up with loot boxes and microtransactions and it would be stupid. Um, yeah. now, honestly, God, I don't uh, really, Brian, I don't see a third part. When I think of big AAA developers, I think of Blizzard Activision, uh, a development company working with Ubisoft, EA, um, uh, 343 Microsoft Studios, um, Bungie, well, Bungie is Activision, um, the, them, that's who I think of. Outside of that, I mean, Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog's, I guess, somewhat... I mean, I guess they're AAA. Rockstar is AAA, but... No, I don't see any of those I games just, doing I it. I don't think the engines... I don't think all those engines were made to handle... They weren't. This is, this is a very taxing game mode. And, it, and there's a reason it started out in a mod, which people ignored bugs and kind of... You know, they, they, the, these engines were made for either really close quarters, like Call of Duty style... Um, that loads all at once, right? Everything's loaded at once or something that lo loads sections over time. Well, how do you deal with a hundred players at once loading in over the whole map all at once? Like it's a huge taxing thing. And it's just, I don't think, I, I don't think it's an easy thing for people to just drop into their game mode. They have to rework a lot of the engine and how it communicates and set up servers that can handle it. I mean, it's just, 
it's kind of a pain to do. Um, pH brings up, you know, dying light is bringing in bad blood, um, which is a, that they're signing up right now. You can go and actually sign up to, yeah, to be a did. part of it. I haven't they're seen this. This, play test. this looks like their, this looks like a battle Royale type game. Um, yeah. So it's, so it's a dying a, light still. I mean, it's, it's, it's a triple A game, right? But still it's not, people don't think of it so much for online. More of a single player. Yeah, exactly. Game and at I, the moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, and the and the other thing too, you would argue is it's already too late. I mean, the these games are. I mean, PUBG is is. I mean, PUBG is going to. Well, Donnie be, brought up like Hunger Games. That that would have been the perfect game if 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 they would have realized at that time that how popular BRs were going to be. It would have been really a, an excellent marketing opportunity for them to come out with a game, the Hunger Games game, <laughs> right? If they if they would have come out with that, they could have the have capitalized on it. But the issue is, the that movie, they've done all the books. Like the, the there's no extra films coming out after this with the Hunger Games. So um, it's all played out. Like the hype is all gone for the movie. And so they they wouldn't sell based on like when a when a new movie comes out, and then they release a game right after they're getting after the after the hype, as people are excited about it. Uh, and I think that with that they're definitely too late. I can't imagine them. I, I just don't know who would come out with anything that much different from PUBG or from you know any of these other battle royale type of games. No. I think they'll all just pretty much copy PUBG. Uh, and I would agree with you. And I mean, there's only so many copies. I mean, here's the thing. PUBG and the the, the whole Battle Royale, even, even the Hunger, Ga Hunger Games Battle Royale is essentially the same concept. It was just different. You dropped in, everybody dropped in at the same area, and you all scattered. Now it's you drop in at all different areas, and you come together. That was kind of the difference between... Uh, the And Hunger yeah. Games did have very popular Minecraft mods, Um well, in the arc mode of this, that it was much more like Hunger Games. Yeah. It was, you started out in a circle just like Hunger Games, and then you had to run away and try to survive. I mean, it was an almost cloned Hunger Games. I remember what, right after the Hunger Games movies came out, I ran a Hunger Games Minecraft server, and it was incredibly popular. Um, because, yeah. But again, because of the movies. Everybody yeah. was freaking out about Hunger Games. So, well, that PH was the is bringing up Islands of Nine. They're actually going to be... I know they've been working on it. So Islands of Nine is the one that I, I kickstarted. Is that the dinosaur one? And their timing was really bad because they they kickstarted it. And between the time that they kickstarted and before they released their first version, PUBG came out and just pretty much ate up the whole market. So they were going to be the H1Z1 replacement, the King of the Kill replacement. Uh, and so they, they came out. But the thing is, is they're a smaller development team. And... They just, I mean, they're still releasing the game, but they just can't compete with PUBG. I mean, PUBG has an actual tested development team and they're able to get, they've already got a back set of games that they can pull from, you know, and they have the knowledge of doing this. This is a, this kickstarted Islands of Nine is more of a, a beginner's project, um, and so, you know, they're, they're releasing it and it's, it's a fun game, but I mean, I really feel bad for them. I know they took some time off, like they were developing in the background just because I think they were trying to figure out what to do after PUBG, but they are still going to release. So, and they're going to be, have, they're actually opening up their servers to be able to start playing again. So I'll, I'll have more news probably after the new years as far as where that's going. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, overall, because we do have a whole bunch of news to get into. Um, I mean, I think PUBG is the, probably going to be the start and the end of the battle royale type game um, on PC. Yeah. On PC, at least the train. I mean, it, it, the train is here and gone. Like you missed the train. So you'll have some. You know, you have some little companies attempt to develop something. Um, yeah. But I don't think I don't think we're I don't think anything serious is going to come, I and mean, that's just yeah. kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, well, and I don't know that there needs to be. I mean, if the, PUBG, if just like some of these uh, game styles, like we talked about zombies. Uh, you know, I said so the Western is going to be coming up here pretty soon. 
those happen in phases. Like the phase will go for a while. People get burn out on it or they're like, okay, I've had my fill of that. And then they move on to the next thing. And so I, I think that this is kind of one of those, this game mode, this style is in a phase right now that we're probably halfway to three, three quarters of the way through at the moment. I think it'll then pass on and then people will be interested in something totally different when a, something new comes out, something that feels fresh, even if it's done before, like it's maybe it was something that was done 10 years ago, but as long as it feels fresh at the moment, uh, you know, people will get all hyped about it and everybody will move there for a while. So exactly. We'll see. Yep. I'm telling you, Western survival is coming. <laughs> Western, op Western open world. Yeah. Western, uh, the WW, uh, wild West online MMO, which is, well, we'll see. I don't know if that's going to be the so um, version that comes out. Yeah. So th th we are totally off, uh, off, off the, off the rails. We haven't here. even started. We haven't even started our notes yet. No. Um, so let's strategically go through these now that we are about half an hour into the program. Um, where do you want to? Where do you want to start? Well, so, I mean, we were talking about Fortnite. So they did announce that fifty versus fifty. Uh, game mode that they're doing. And I'm wondering if this is possibly partially because of their issues with the 100 versus 100 match. Um, I I'm just wondering if they're trying to, while they're tuning their servers, maybe... Uh, well, there's still 100 people. Go. I mean, well, the, yeah. No, it's, I, no I, so it's not any different. No, I think the thing here... No, I know exactly what this I mean, is. What, what, what's the point? Like, what are they trying to accomplish with this? So in this mode, building is much more of a thing that can be done because you're playing with a team. You're playing with more of a team. Um, I think this is yeah. them just trying to diversify themselves from... Is it a smaller map, though? No, it's the same map. Um, no, honest to God, I really think this is nothing more than them trying to say, hey, we aren't PUBG. Here's a game mode that Here's is different. Here's something new and different. Yeah, and and it is different. It's PUBG has nothing even in comparison to this. You, it's fifty v fifty. The trailer is really cool. I'm not going to show it, uh, but the trailer is really cool. It essentially shows two teams on either side of forts, and they're building and, and doing their whole thing. So that um, I think it's just nothing more than them saying, "Hey, we are not." The I think same this thing. is probably closer to the original Fortnite game mode because Fortnite was is the whole thing is is you're preparing. What was the actual game is based on is you're preparing for a zombie invasion, right? Okay. And so you're sitting there and building all these defenses and coming up with with the base that you think will withstand that zombie invasion. Mm -hmm. And so uh, th I think this one is, as you said, is much more based on the original because it's if because base building is more of a focus and defending against an onslaught of someone else. So. Would be interesting to see is if this is kind of a transition into maybe a open world survival type of a game, it, because it, it, you it know if they're be. having it to where people are actually building bases and then defending. I wonder if they'll eventually transition into having something that's more of a permanent open world survival, where it just takes a lot. You know, and you're not instantly building things like it takes time to build things because it seems like this could easily transition into that next thing. Yes, no, I agree. Oh. It, it it could very well. I think it, I still think it's too cartoonish and too arcadey for that. Um, but but who knows? You know you know it's it, you never know. But uh, the fifty fifty game mode is out. It's in Fortnite. So download the Epic Launcher, install Fortnite if you want to play it, um, and and you can jump in the the game mode. They did a whole bunch of advertising yep. at the Video Game Awards, which happened last week. So um, honestly, that's the reason I jumped in because they which is weird is they're not making any money off of this. So but it's Epic Games. I mean. They got they got so the hard. money. Well, but the thing is, for Fortnite, they charge so much, it's like a hundred something bucks for one of the packs in the regular yeah, game. I don't know. I just don't. I don't get why they make this one totally free and then they charge. Why not just sp lower it down and have some sort of a little bit of a pay model for this? Time and will make tell. the regular Fortnite affordable. Because I'm not going to pay 150 bucks for Fortnite, personally. So. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into some of the... Let's start, talk about Hurt World for a few minutes. Okay. Uh, one thing that they did is they put out a, a new patch on the 8th. So this is 0.4.8.3. And this is on, on their experimental branch. Uh, one thing they did is they added airdrops that spawn all over the map and drop valuable packages of weapons and gear. I, mean, I don't know if that sounds familiar to you. Uh, they added meteor strikes that spawn rare resources. So... 
uh, incoming and active meteor strike will be displayed on the map. Um, and this says, be careful because meteor strikes can damage bases. He added a craftable, craftable vehicle airdrop beacon to spawn a vehicle via airdrop. And then uh, after that, I mean, it's mainly just then adjustments to the game. Uh, things like vehicle wheels can be shot off again. They had turned that off for a period of time. Um, increase the ladder climbing speed, things like that. So uh, those are the main new things for the 4.3, uh, or sorry, 4.8.3. And then 4.8.4 .4 came out on the 11th, so yesterday, and it was mainly just fixes. This was a hot fix. It said they added totems to wood workbenches. They fixed not being able to get out of vehicles. Vehicle airdrops now come drivable, and they did a pass on the female characters. So uh, that's one thing they've been working on is getting female characters, because if you remember, originally, there was only male, male characters in this game at first. So in, in the last month or so, I think it was, they added a female to this. So that is pretty much Hurt World. There you go. Now, do you have something else we want to jump into before we get into PUBG? Because we have a lot in PUBG. Do you no, care? no, we can do PUBG. Anything else? Um, we're, we're only about half an hour into the program, so we could, we'll probably do PUBG okay. and then uh, move on. Um, so as I said, uh, right opening the show, um, PUBG is now out today on the Xbox One. We ha I have reached out to their team to get a key for it for Xbox. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, as I will be traveling here come Friday, um, I'm not going to, even if I get the key before Friday, which I don't suspect I will, I won't have a chance to play it. Um, so it's good. It, it'll be a couple weeks before I get a chance to actually try it. But um, I do plan on extensively playing the Xbox One version of this game to try to, you know, just compare it a little bit to the PC version. Um yeah. So that's out today. That's big stuff. And um I mean it's it's a it's a big deal. I mean, we're taking a game that is literally hitting 2.9 million concurrent players every single weekend, typically every Saturday, and we're going to transition that over to to the console now, which has a so has such a large player base compared to PC. I can't imagine anything but this thing just exploding and going through and just the yeah. numbers going through the roof on, on Xbox. Unfortunately, like the PC version, we're not going to ever have those statistics where uh, maybe not. Brandon is actually pretty good with posting stats. Um, so maybe he will every once in a while say, Hey, you know, this X amount of people playing this or what, but it, I don't think they do. They don't have the same stats on Xbox, I think, like they do on Steam. I'm, I'm sure they have it internally, yeah. but I don't think it's given to the... But they don't release them like we can pull up a graph saying here's exactly. exact numbers. Yeah. Um, so, so we're not really going to know. So there's a video. I don't know if you want to play this. There's the video from the 2017 Game Awards. I don't think we show, showed this last week. No, I don't but, think. Um, no, I don't think. It they've... does show some of the new map. Uh, so some of it will seem very familiar to you, but about halfway through the video, they start showing some of the new maps. So that's the main reason I wanted to show that. Gotcha. All right, so that's the uh, that's the PUBG video as they show off the the desert map and 
put the date up on... This was done in the Video Game Awards, which I believe happened last Thursday, so between the yes. last show. Um, they showed it. They, they teased it the, literally the entire show. They'd be like, oh, and coming up after this break, the PUBG, uh, the new Battlegrounds map, and they literally did that every break until like the second to last one where they actually showed it. So that was kind of the big, yeah. the big thing of the event, which I thought the Video Game Awards was actually pretty good this year. Um, so... I guess this is our segue into the map itself. Um, the map is out, and I guess I'll ask you first. Have you had a chance to play on it? No, I have not oh. played on it yet. Finally, I got the upper hand on something here. Uh, Myanmar <laughs> is the new... Is, I think it's Myanmar is the, is, is the name of the new map. Um, and I, Well, that's what it is. I think that's how it's pronounced, I should say. Um, it's uh, Here's a picture of the of the loadout of it this is if you press m in game to pull up the map this is what you see uh, looking at it quickly it does kind of have the same look uh, flow as the re regular map there's a island that's disconnected by two bridges and then the mainland um yep. so and if you look at it quickly i mean they they're, they're, they're quite similar the island's not as big but uh, you just look at it it's the similar concept there's a couple big cities road networks connecting it little towns in between there's some things like the power grid and a water treatment plant that are kind of in the middle of nowhere um yeah so the um they have like crater what's interesting they have craters in there so that's yeah, kind of a unique landscape it's, um, type of the thing so. yeah it's a it's a good map um i've played i played it a little while saturday um no I played it a little while friday and saturday and um, really, really enjoyed it. I uh, I like the the desert mechanic. Um, this is the first time I've played with uh, vaulting and jumping and diving through windows and climbing up on top of objects. That's been in the test server for a little while, but I just haven't had a chance to do that. So, and I think a lot of people, it was the same thing. At one point over the weekend, and I'll have this in current players, there was over 150,000 people playing just the test server of... PUBG. It was like seven or eight times yeah. the amount of people playing H one Z and King of the Kill were playing the Crazy. PUBG test server, the test server, and I now I'll, I'll have those numbers for current players. So there was a lot of people playing it. Um, we played. I played it a lot. The map itself, the flow, have, it was it was all right. Um, there wasn't anything to call home about. Um, the, the obviously vehicles are in there. You can you know, drive around and do that. We did have um, did have some issues with some. I don't know if it was hacking or lagging, but a lot of very odd kills that we experienced. Uh, one of the zones was in the water, and we had to swim, which wasn't the greatest. Um, overall, the vaulting I think is going to be a huge issue for the game. I have yeah. uh, I thought it was going to be a great asset, but unfortunately, what it, it seems like it's caused is people to just kind of sit um the, people just kind of hang around they, there's not this there's like more there's more things to do now because you can just kind of yeah. climb up on things you can dive through windows you people are just 10 people are camping is what it comes down to. people are just camping in buildings you're walking into buildings and you're, and you're getting shot which is it wasn't happening a whole lot in PUBG unless you got more towards the end game and there were like two buildings in the zone that makes sense but I'm just talking in cities. You'd open up a door and there's a team sitting in there and it's like, oh, I'm dead. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's necessarily the vaulting. Well, the other thing too to, to, to note is that because it's a new map, people aren't comfortable playing it. So maybe that's also causing it. I do think it's a, I think yeah. it's a mixture of both. I think it's a combination of the vaulting and the climbing and, um, you know, you nobody really knows the map. So, that could be a part of it. Hopefully that will clear up as more people play it. Um, the kill cam is in there. Like Nisco's mentioning, the kill cam is really cool. But, um, you know, overall, it it feels, like a, it feels like PUBG. I mean, the mechanics are exactly the same. It's just a different map. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, one, it's exciting, one they but... Add in this, one thing they sh that they're doing in this one and then the announcement that I thought was interesting is they, they have all the town names. Yep. And they actually have a backstory. Yes, they do. I mean, kind of my, my holding with immersion. They go through and they talk about, like, for instance, uh, El Pozo, however that's pronounced, is a city known for its large industrial and entertainment district. Players can test themselves against all comers in the Luchador Arena, put their motorcycle skills to the test in the Death Bowl, 
or hunt in the ruins of the long dead textile factories. You know, they have kind of a story be behind each town and something that's unique about the town. Uh, like Monte Nuevo is a is the picture of a town besieged. Ramshackle walls built to protect its residents now allow players ample cover to explore the well-stocked compound. You know, so each town has something unique about it. And I thought that was pretty interesting that they went through and did that. It's very cool. Rather than just because you don't have that in their standard map. Like it's just all these different towns. I mean, you could kind of read into it. Here it looks like there was factories, so it's it's a factory area. Um, but there's not really anything unique between each section of the map. You know, there, one may have more factories than another, but that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, there's no backstory of what happened. Um, here they're kind of saying, well, here, you know, this town was trying to protect themselves and that's why it looks like this. Exactly. Um, which, which is, is, you know, it doesn't change. It doesn't affect the game at all, but it's, it's for people like you, Brian, that are all into that merchant stuff. It, it, it's, it, it's a very inexpensive thing for them to produce. You um, notice, yeah, you notice it. You run around and you're like, oh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, for players like me, it doesn't make a difference if they do or don't do it because I just don't go and read these things. But um, Donnie yeah. makes a good point. But saying, like the prison, they have a prison. Uh, I don't know if you want to pull up some of these pictures that they have yeah. on there. But, like they have the picture of the prison and that looks like it's really well done. I mean, it went down to the detail of having, I mean, I assume it's a prison. It, no, it's that's got the water that, treatment plant. Um, yeah, that is, the, that is the prison. It does have a water treatment plant. There is a full water treatment plant as well. Okay, um, in there, it, like you can see that they have, it's like a, I don't know if it's basketball, it looks like soccer, but they've got- um, This is actually the know, spawn area. Like, is it? Yep. Cool. I mean, it, 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 I mean, it looks really interesting. Like they went through and did a lot of detail. Yeah, I believe I think this it's cool is- cool actually go through. I believe this is the spawn area. Okay, cool. Well, so, as I said, I haven't played it yet, so I haven't got to see it, but I, I, that's really well done. Oh, absolutely. There you can see like there's 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 uh trains from things that were never completed, buildings that are partially finished. So uh, radio towers, I mean all it's got a lot of cool details in there. So it'd be fun. Overall but I, the whole time on Discord I was hearing you guys complain about how it's just crashing or like it, it was laggy. I just heard a lot of negative things. So I was like, I don't really want to play it right now. So I think part of the issue was um Part of it was I, do, I don't think they were prepared for the amount of users, which isn't an excuse, but 150,000 people on your test servers is a lot. Um, yeah. That That's just a theory. Um, if it's not that, then I don't know what the issue is. But there did seem to be... The game felt a little bit um, slower, maybe, is the word to use. Everything yeah. just felt a little slower. And I don't know if that's because the settings were maybe different because it's essentially a different um, launcher. It's essentially a different game. Um but it seemed a little They've bit been talking slower. a lot about that authentication system and everything. I wonder if it uses, you know, the whole thing of, of being able to handle and queue people up into all these instances. I'm, I'm wondering if that is fully replicated on the test servers. If that's something that can handle, if they ever, if they built it to handle those kind of numbers, like you were seeing. I mean, they may have built it for thousands of players but not 150,000 players yeah. at one time so for example here's an example this is what we were playing a, a, a squad and this was a, this was ph's kill cam when somebody killed him um <laughs> so i mean i don't know what that is i don't know if that's i don't know well, what if that he is was having enough lag that's what the server saw well and that's my thing is i don't know i don't know what I don't know what that is. That could be a whole bunch of things, but that was some of the stuff that we were dealing with. I believe I was aimbotted. Um, I, I'm not going to go through it on the show because it's boring, but the guy, like, I uploaded it to streamable and I could slow it down to quarter speed and you could see the guy shot me four times and every time he shot me, his crosshair, like, jolted to my head, shot, jolted to my head, shot, jolted to my head, shot. Um, so, but again, and the other thing too is, is that, the server or is that the player? And, and there really wasn't a thing. To, and I don't know. Overall, the map was really good. The experience wasn't great. Um, the new the new design of the game makes it feel and look like a AAA title. Um, the text is much better. That new HUD that we talked about, I think, last week or the week before is awesome. Yeah. It looks really polished. It looks finished. You know, white aerial 12-point font is gone. 
you know, gray opaque boxes for menus are gone. It's polished. It, it's finished. Uh, it's got that. It's got that triple A feel to it when you're in the menu. The home screen looks a whole lot better. Um, so there's a whole bunch of things. I would highly recommend anybody that owns PUBG jump on the test server. You're gonna have to learn the new map anyway once it gets put into the game. So you might as well put a couple game, maybe put a couple hours in on test server so that when it hits live, you're not unprepared. Because realistically, with 150,000 people playing, more than you know, way more than half of those people will never have played the new map when it actually yeah. hits the game. So you'll have yourself a great upper hand on, um, on on I guess the, the what you'd call the filthy casuals when uh, when the New map actually comes to the live server, so it's good. I, it, the map itself is good. Some of the other things, I don't know if those we are playing at peak times. Don't know if those were server things, but I would highly recommend that you try the even you, Brian. Highly recommend that you try the the test server because the the map is really yeah, freaking cool. We'll have to give it a try. Very cool. Now is that a separate download on this one? It is a separate download. And actually, we're it... going to be playing that Friday. So if there's, so your, I'll get it downloaded. I mean, there's your opportunity for anybody that's listening to this that has PUBG. We're going to be playing the PUBG test server Friday. If something happens with the test server, we'll switch over to live, but I don't foresee that being an issue. So Friday night, I will not be there. Um, I'm going to be traveling for for uh, the holidays, but um, Brian will be there, and and hopefully, if anybody anybody else that hasn't played the test server, would love to have you in our Discord. Um, it, it's a lot of fun. It really is. I think I think you'll enjoy it. Cool. Yeah, I will definitely. Uh, I'll get it installed here today, after the show, and then we'll we'll go from there. Now, uh, let's let's just go over some of the quick notes. Uh, we'll have links to all the different things talking about uh, the new map and everything. But they did put out just some some notes for the version 1.0 patch two. Okay. That uh, they that they're releasing, and this this came out yesterday. Uh, one thing that that they mentioned is from this week, we will be adding um, a wrangle back into the mix. And that's their, that's another map. So that's, uh, I think that's a, the new map, right? Or that's a, another, that's, is that the original map or wrangle? It may be. Yeah. So that way I think on test they're, they're putting back. In okay. there. So yeah, that would make uh, sense. we want to test a wrangle in conjunction with all the new features as we make our final adjustments for PC 1.0. Cause on test servers, the new map, right? Yeah. So they want to be able to test all these new features that they just put in on the original map. Gotcha. Okay. That you makes know, sense. so because that's the thing is they're, they're testing all the, these new features, but they are not letting people play it on the original map right now. So they're going to be putting that back on there so you can go through and, and hopefully they'll fix any other bugs that may be remaining there. Uh, and the, the test server, you know, this is, it says test servers will stay open until PC 1.0 on, is on live servers. So you, there's not going to be a cutoff date for this. You can keep on playing. Uh, and it will be first and third person for solo, duo, and squads. Uh, in there, they unlock the rewards menu in the lobby. Players will now be able to check their performance in career and leaderboards. I don't know if you got to check this second. If you were able to check that out at all, we'll check what up. They had to unlock the rewards menu and then players being able to check their performance in career and leaderboards. So that's a, a new section of the lobby. No, we didn't. We didn't. I didn't really play it that much. And and well, that's not true. I did play it a lot. I just kind of we just played the games and we just closed out of it. I, yeah, you didn't, you didn't <laughs> for, browse around for people exactly for people that know me. Like I don't. I don't browse around the menus. Like I literally <laughs> opened the game, selected the white shirt, the jeans, the default jeans. Cause I mean, that's all I had the shirt, the jeans, the, the boots and clicked play like that. I, I didn't, I didn't, I don't browse around, um, which most of the time to my detriment. <laughs> um, but, uh, so now in this, I am thinking that now you can choose between the maps. So I think that now you can actually choose. So you should be able to play with the new things, Erangle or Miramar. Uh, and it's it says which map is played will be selected randomly when the match begins. Um, they added a wet effect for vehicles. And then um, this effect can be found in rainy weather on Erangle. And they added the aqua rail. And there's a picture of it. I think I have it as maybe the second picture. Uh, but they added the aqua, aqua rail on Erangle which is pretty much a jet ski uh, from what I, I mean, from the picture, it just looks like a pretty, 
It looks like an interesting looking uh, jet ski. And then um, they added the Miramar's new ghillie suit to the care package on a wrangle. Uh, so, and that's more of a tan colored ghillie suit. Mm -hmm. uh, the helmet, vest, bag, HUD UI elements will now be on by default. They added a transparent background box behind the HUD UI for clear visibility. And then after that, just fixing bugs. They fixed an issue with the insides of Wrangle buildings being too dark. Fixed uh, the God. abnormal player shadow in first uh, first person. Um, deleted the M16A4 from the tooltip of 8X and 15X scopes since it's no longer able to uh, to load those. And they fixed the issue with players' footstep sounds being silent when players moved diagonally or wore particular shoes. And they fixed an issue of two instances of players' characters existing after reconnecting. So those were the that's the patch two for the 1.0 test build. That's there you go. Right now. You uh so. You heard, heard it here first. Um, again, highly, highly recommend that if you are, if you are, if you're a PUBG person, do yourself a favor. And it's going to be unfortunate now that you don't get the choice between the two maps. Um, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, if I, I mean, don't get random, if I don't so. get the map, I'm just going to leave the game and just get into like I mean, I want to play in the new map. I don't that that in my that is very stupid in my opinion. That's going to turn people off from playing on the test server. I do not want to play yeah. on the old map. I want to play on the. But the thing is, that they map. want people to play so they can make sure that there's no bugs with, with either map. I get that. So they're kind of tricking people into playing both. Oh, well, I mean, they're not going to trick me into playing. I just won't play it. <laughs> I mean, you just you just leave every game yeah. that's the old map. It's I mean, it seems pretty, uh, pretty basic to me. But um, yep. Really, if you have the opportunity, if you get the chance, jump on the test server. Do yourself a favor because it's it's uh, it's a lot of fun. Now, do you want to show off these? Right. These? Do you want to show the pictures for these new weapons? Or yeah, so yeah, they've got. Um, oh, and I, I sorry, I thought I had the picture. No, I do. I so do you want to show that picture of the vehicle uh, that they're adding the in? Ski and that's boat the here. yeah, the it's a jet, jet ski. ski. Yep. But it was it's like a jet ski that's made out of wood. Yeah, it's yeah, unique. yeah, yeah, it's very odd. I don't know, it's, any, it looks I don't know like any a, wood jet skis. It looks like a sleigh or like a canoe with a jet ski built in. I, I don't. It looks like an upside down canoe with a jet ski. Odd. Yeah, that's what I was assuming. I mean, it, it everything else looks like a jet ski, but it's got just kind of an odd. And the handlebars are literally like, like just looks like a pipe. It's like a pipe. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bar, and you just turn it. You just yeah. turn the the rudder. I mean, one is it supposed to be homemade? I mean, is that kind of the I, no, because it's got a huge for? boat engine on the back of it. Um, so I, no, no, I don't really think so. But uh, that's the that's the boat jet ski thing. Here's the here's the new revolver, and here's something really cool about the revolver. Little things that intrigue me in video games. So you, if you're looking at this, you see the barrels got those four um, slots in it above the barrel. Those four holes. You yeah. would think that those would just be kind of masked areas in the game where you wouldn't it, it would just kind of be a dead area. You can actually see the world through those gaps in the gun, which I find super cool. Like most games, yeah. for example, H1Z would, would just make it so that it was just like it was like a lighter uh, like this this gun is black. They would make it like a light gray. So it would just look like there was a gap there. This game you literally see the world through the holes in the revolver, which I find to be super cool. Yeah. So that that's uh, that's that. I haven't shot it. I've had yeah, it. I haven't they, had a chance. They go to through use and it. do some really good detail. I mean, that's one thing I like. Yeah. Is the the detail they put in there. So. Uh, I mean, this is the. Uh, I mean, this is a, a pump action rifle. The Winchester, uh, I believe. And it. it yeah, uh, thirty thirty. I mean, uh, it, it looks like a thirty thirty to me, uh, but it. Yeah, it's got a, a nice pump action. Um, it has that ammo sleeve that kind of like what the shotgun has where you can put it on the, uh, loops. the butt of the gun. Yeah, Bullet loops, yes. That you, so you can get some extra rounds without taking up so much bag space with that. So these are all new ones for the new... This is for the new desert map that all these ones are going on to. Gotcha. These weapons. So they, they have unique weapons, unique vehicles um, split between the maps. But I think it's kind of nice. They didn't try to... I mean, they've got the money, so they're not trying to sit there and repeat assets, which is good. So, for any developer All out right. there, take a note 
out of PUBG's playbook. I mean, you want to talk about how do I become, how do I make a rock star game? How do I make a game that hit, knocks it out of the park? How do I make a game that, you know, is just a grand slam? Follow this strategy because they yeah. know what they're doing. I mean, every, I mean, we're, th this game is killing it, Brian. It's, it's killing it. Yep. It's because of one hard thing, work. One cool thing they have is that that sawed off double barrel shotgun. I don't have a picture of it, but I yes. saw some video of it. And I've had I mean, it. that looks really cool too. And they're creating those guns for those really nice, close indoor combat, uh, which I think you know is, is the fun part of the game. So just creating something to where if if you're going to be roaming around halls, like that double barrel shotgun is perfect. Yeah, the only thing that's a little tough is kind of retraining yourself to switch guns when you walk into doors and walk into houses and stuff. Um, yeah. that That's kind of the retraining that you have to go through. But uh, once you figure that out, you uh, should be good to go. All right. Hey, are we ready for the next raffle here? I think that's all the PUBG. Yeah. I guess we'll start with our first raffle. Good for all right. So exclamation point giveaway, and we'll do a 30 points raffle here. I'm going to be giving away a copy of the Bureau XCOM Declassified. And this game that currently is about $20, 1999 on Steam at the moment. So exclamation point giveaway, and you can enter for that. And it is a action tactical sci-fi third person shooter game based on the XCOM series, which is a really popular game series. So yes, uh, check so it out. Can enter that. Uh, we are, uh, of course, here live every Tuesday night if you want to, um, you know, tune into the to the show i say every tuesday night we will not be live two tuesdays from now the day after christmas we will not be live yep. um this the show may stream live but we won't actually be live but every other tuesday uh we're here live we've been doing it for now 152 weeks straight we Good have hold. we've never missed an episode we've done nope. it on some not mondays yet. some wednesday no and i don't plan on it yeah so uh i, I literally planned my move to North Carolina around doing the podcast. Like it, it was a whole, like, it, it, it's, it's a thing. Like tonight I was like, we had some yep. stuff going on at work and I was like, I gotta go. I got stuff. Yep. Podcasting time. So you uh, just make it part of your schedule. And that's is, where, yeah. I mean, getting into podcasting, that's where a lot of podcasters fail is when they get to the, Oh, do I have time? You know, can I get to the, my podcast this week? Um, Nick and I have a term called pod fade that <laughs> yes. we talk about and it's where, you know, they'll miss a week or they'll, you know, they'll skip a, an episode here and there. And then, you know what, that becomes a habit and then you don't do episodes anymore. Yeah. And well, we'll, so and we'll that's something where for us, we just make sure that with an episode always gets done. Yes. And we will talk about that on our, we'll probably, let's bring this up on our, uh, our Christmas show as well. Cause Christmas I think, episode? yeah, I think that's interesting. Okay. So, uh, you tune in for that. That'll be live next, uh, next two, two Tuesdays from now. Excuse me. So, um, yeah. And for the giveaway and we do have some H one Z one news. Now, <laughs> now is this the, the H one Z one that you know, or the H one Z one that, which H one Z one is This is just it? survive. I'm sorry. Do we have some just survive news? Um, it's still, I mean, this yeah. is, this is, see, this is the problem. <laughs> I'm not, they swapped all the names. I'm not intentionally doing that. It's just, it's H1Z1. It's always been H1Z1. It's like if Call of Duty may change their name to ShooterGame.exe. Like, everybody would call it Call of, call Duty. of Duty. It's just what you call the game. Yeah. Battlefield, doesn't matter. It, it's, it's Battlefield. They add a whole bunch of acronyms to it. When I send my friend Sean a message... So you want to play Battlefield. He knows exactly what game I want to play. We want, I, we want to play Battlefield 4. We own a whole bunch of Battlefields. It's just, it, it, you beat the name into people's heads and then you you change it and it, 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 it just doesn't make any sense. And then you change it multiple times. <laughs> well, and H1Z1 is actually changing the name again, but we'll get to that in the H1Z1 segment. Yes, we'll get to that. But first, with Just Survive, um, they do say... Um, with a renewed interest in Just Survive, which I don't know, that that is a gross. There? There's an that's an ina I mean, statistically, that is an inaccurate statement. There is not fake, a renewed it's interest. It's called fake hype. I mean, I guess they're, they're trying to create a sense of hype. It's, hey, all of you really like our game now, so let's tell you something. I mean, that's pretty much what they're saying. Uh, when that may not be true at all. I will um, I I will bring you the 
the, the I, I will, I'll do a quick, I'm going to do an interesting current play. We'll do our regular set, but then I want to talk about a couple games like ju the, the uh, Just Survive. We'll talk about the PUBG test server. So we'll have some of, some of that stuff later on. Um, but they mentioned cheaters, of course, big issue. When it's, it's, it's uh, no secret. Online games have to deal with cheaters. So um, again, the first thing is if you see somebody cheating, of course, send an email. It's just survive cheater daybreak games with an S plural dot com. Um, and essentially they say there's two ways to defeating um, you cheats. And of course they say that the team is putting in extra hours. I mean, again, it's their game. So <laughs> yeah, but you got to put extra hours. Your game, the game's a disaster. Uh, so they talk about detection and then prevention and they go through the whole thing with that. Um, they say, you know, for example, they said uh, detection. This part happens uh, frequently without required code updates. The result in the it results in Bavewan, uh, ban waves. For example, the grenade exploit uh, below was immediately detecting all individuals who have cheated in any way were banned, which I don't agree with. Um, I don't think it should be banned for using an exploit. But nevertheless, um, then they talk about prevention, and then they say this part requires software updates. And they mention, of course, they've done a whole bunch of updates since um, 11.22, excuse me, 11.20. And, um, I mean, overall, this is, how about you just fix it? Yeah. Plain and simple. I don't need this stupid Reddit post to tell me that, well, this is how it works. We detect the thing. For I mean, really? We're talking about the grenade exploit banning people? Which wasn't a hack. Like, they're talking about cheaters and... Uh, we've talked about that before. I don't. I don't think that's necessarily a hack. Just it's not someone's <laughs> playing the game in in the way that you wrote it, not in the way that you intended. Um, doesn't mean that they're cheating, and that's what they're saying is they're this is a cheat for them. So them detecting the cheat is just saying, oh, some people are taking, you know, they're using the game how we wrote it. Let's ban them, which drives drives me crazy. Yes. It's not a cheat. People aren't downloading any executable, and changing the way the game is is working to make that happen they're just playing the game it's like people that sit down in call of duty and like scoot around on their butt same thing that you used to do in in king of the kill remember when people sit down in the lobby and they'd scoot around really fast sitting down yeah, yeah i mean is that is that a cheat uh, no idea according i mean according to this it is i mean people doing things other than intended but how it was written it doesn't make it a cheat just because it's embarrassing to the developer that they didn't do it right doesn't make it a cheat yeah and that that's so. part of the issue i deal with um and again that's another thing we may get to on the on the the, the, the christmas show about that stuff but um essentially here they the, the, so they talk about this update this was the live update this went out the sixth so a couple days ago um it, it, it was last wednesday <clears throat> so the couple things yeah. that they did fix in here is they fixed an issue that could cause ch uh, chain doors shacks and shack doors to fail to destruct at hit point zero so if you broke it all the way down it wouldn't destruct uh, fixed an exploit that allowed players to spawn infinite grenades fixed an item duplicate a duping exploit which are quite common a speculative fix for the respawn issue who knows if it's actually fixed or not fix a series server crash that would cause the server to fail on automatic restart and then updated anti-cheat countermeasures so kind of just a uh, i mean i guess you called it a, a uh, QOL patch, a quality of life patch. There's really nothing in here besides, yeah. you know, a couple of cheats, a couple of hacks. And nothing that you're going to really notice in the game is no. you're not going to log in and be like, oh, this looks different. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so more of a quality of life patch. Um, that's, uh, I mean, that's, uh, I mean, that's it. So let's keep this same graphic up and let's transfer to H1Z1, okay. as they call it, King of the Kills, we know it. Um, so they they actually put out a notice that they are renaming the game for China, for the port to China. Makes sense. So te the same company, Tencent, that is doing, uh, I think the H one or the King or the PUBG yep. um, remaster or whatever you want to call it for China, is doing the same things. Uh, supposedly they're going to be doing that for H one Z one, but they're going to be calling it. What was it? king of survival so because they can't do king of the kill they can't do i, I don't i don't think they want to do h1z1 I, I don't know why they're not doing h1z1 as the name but they're going to be calling it h1z1 king of survival so kind of an odd i don't know why i don't know why they wouldn't just what 
is there something wrong with like the virus? Like, is there a reason that China wouldn't want the virus in there? I'm trying to think of what uh, uh, reason they would have not for having it be H1Z1 in China and H1Z1 here. I think maybe they're taking a book out of Activision's playbook and trying to change the name so it's not the same thing. So that they're totally unrelated yep. products. I, I'm not actually that. I I don't really per se care about this. I do think it may be just them trying to separate the games, making them different. Um, I hope that's what it is because that would actually make sense. Um, but uh, I mean, we'll see. We'll see what we'll see what happens. Yeah. So, because they're what they're. I mean, the thing is, is the game was banned in China, and so they're working closely with Tencent. We want, and here's a quote: "We want to create the most accessible experience possible that is respectful of cultural preferences and values." Um, you know, and that's the thing is over there. They couldn't show blood. The, you know, they couldn't show the police car. There was just a lot of changes that they had to do. Uh, and so they're going to be having it to where they go through a publisher inside of China and they'll have their own product just like Call of Duty does uh, to where they will have a different game, which I think is a great thing. Uh, I think they, as, you, as we've talked about before, they need to get them on different clients so that they, there's no chance of them having, you know, give them their own version that they can play on over there. Um, you know, give other areas their own version. And I think that'll cut out a lot of the uh, issues that we've been running into with this game in the last year. I mean, since it's been released. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. That's, that's, that's I was going to say that. I was, trying to think of a, I was going back in my head in the time. I was like, For three okay, years. Since, since, the big, <laughs> since the beginning, yes. Yeah. Um, I think that's actually a good, a good call. Just to, two separate entities, the U S game for North America and, and Europe and China and not China, Canada, Mexico, whatever. Yep. And then, you know, China and the, 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 that region. Yep. All right. And then, uh, they put out an update here on the ninth. So this is the 12, nine, uh, test server update. Um, this is one that, uh, that, I mean, they, they made, they actually made a lot of changes to this. So they have, gas pacing and damage changes that they've done on this one. Um, they did add a new crate. I don't know if you want to pull up the the images of that. It's called the icebreaker crate. Yes. And it has all their, pretty much their Christmas, not that they'll call it Christmas, but their Christmas, uh, <laughs> their Christmas themed items. Um, also on here, I mean, if you look, it's got a lot of white is the uh, kind of the theme of this. So they have their Santa hat. Uh, I mean, no, sorry, their uh, snowman hat. They've got kind of Christmas wrapping skins. They've got ice looking skins. They've got one uh, skin for a weapon that looks like it's Christmas lights. Love the Hellfire skin. Um, got, Love that. Yeah. the uh, That's cool look. They've got these. Yeah, it does. Uh, and then they've got these uh, kind of the snow stalker, which doesn't make a lot of sense when being that there's no snow in the game. But imagine if you, if there were snow in the game and you could put on all that white outfit be pretty intense they've got a gift wrapped uh truck skin like that as well uh yeah um they have some kind of blue snowflake style skins a red a bright red backpack which just kind of matches the red of christmas but a whole outfit that's all white that if you want to do that it kind of goes with the theme of all white there's some red items there's blue items and then there's kind of a green like an ugly sweater, but their pants <laughs> outfit. And there's no ugly sweater. Did I mean, I think they'd already did that one before. So maybe this is remember. the pants that match the ugly sweater that they had. Yeah, I don't, so, I don't, I don't remember that. Um, they, oh, can, they got a candy cane, nine millimeter skin. I would say so. overall, um, I, I, I like this skin. Yeah. Or excuse me, I like these skins. I like this. I like this. I like the crate is what I should say. Um, I, I really I mean, like this yeah, crate. I mean, it's cool. I really like the white. I personally really like the white one. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty, they did a good job. It's different. On, and that's on the see, look of it. And this is the thing. It's different. It's, it's totally different. And, and you know, the games, this is what they should do with this. First of all, they shouldn't have made them. They shouldn't have made a crate. They should have changed the already existing items into these items for a limited time. That's the way to do it. Because I don't want these in game year round. I want them in game for a limited amount of time. That's the way yeah, to do it. Yeah, but they want to sell it. They want to have a market so they can make percentages. And I get that, but that would have been the way to do it. Because I don't want to see these skins in July. Yeah. 
Like, I want to see these skins in and around Christmas. Let me see these skins for two months. Put them on the server for two months for all I care. Started at the beginning well, I mean, of December, were, ended if, it, and ended in the at the end of January, beginning of February. If they were capable, and for over Christmas time, they had a snow map, like the map had snow on it. That'd be great. Then they'd be like, oh, this is an awesome set of skins for the snow map. Yeah. You know, you'd have your white, so you're kind of like the, it's equal to camouflage in there. Uh, but I just, they're not going to do that. Like, that just doesn't work. I mean, maybe eventually they'll get snow on the map, but I, I don't know. I mean, Activision, uh, you saw they've done that with Call of Duty. I don't know if you've played it, but the new, the snow map, they have the yeah. snow map. They've got the Christmas tree in the lobby. It's snowing. It, it's cool. Yep. I mean, and that's the only reason I say is I don't see it happening. It's just because it's daybreak. I just don't see them getting it out. They may eventually get snow in the game, but it's not going to be within a certain time frame, and it's not going to be on time. So, uh, as far as the 12.9 patch, they have the compass has been approved and now shows the following items. Uh, the opacity of the items provides a hint as far as how far away they are. Your grid location has also been centered in the UI beneath the compass. So nearby points of interest, nearby airdrop creates the edge of current gas ring. Uh, icons for teammates and markers for your team has been placed on the map. So those all show on that compass. Um, also, there's some models for updated weapons and so they have some really high res uh, weapon models here, which Nick, I just look at these and they look like photos. I mean, they're that crisp. Well, these are photos, I believe. No, these are theirs. These are the models. I think these are photos. These are the model. Not a chance. No, 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 no. These are absolutely photos. Then, no, those are models. Uh, <laughs> If you say so, I don't think, I don't see how that, I don't see this how that's is their model. renders. These are like their real renders. I mean, like this is what they model. I mean, maybe. I'm telling you, these are models. Okay. It looks like a photo. I mean, honest to God, Brian, I mean, I know enough about That's what I'm saying. Is that's how clear it is. I, I So I'm saying, look at this. And now imagine what it looks like inside the game. It's going to look like shit in the game. It doesn't matter. I mean, that's a, this yeah. is a waste so of time. Why is there all this detail? I mean, look at the amount of detail they went to modeling. This one looks, this one looks like a model. This, uh, this glow yeah. on yeah, the Yeah, these handle. are all models. So, so what, okay, I want to make, I want to make a, a mention. So go to the first one, the one that's the nine millimeter. If you look very closely at the, sl you know, the slider of the weapon, they put down the detail of pretty much having like wet, like marks from dirty fingers touching it. Yes. That's how much detail they went to into this. No way is that going to show in the engine. No, There's I agree. No way. Why are they wasting it? I mean, make show us what the game is going what it's going to look like in the game. It looks because like a 3D this printed is gun. 9. Yeah. They they went through and they rendered it in like ultra realistic mode. I I mean, I guess now, one thing that really makes me notice that it's it's not real is if you look down at the where the magazine goes in, mm -hmm. and you see that loop. Yep. See how they they put a metal loop that you know has for the like a removable magazine. It it just goes into the the gun. There's like no attachment. Doesn't make sense. It's like it's melted into it. So I mean that that's one little detail. They went through all that detail and then they mess up on something like that, but. Um, but yeah, there's incredible detail. I think the the other three look like models. The first one I do, I, the first one I thought was a photo. Yeah, I mean th these are actual. Yeah, these are. I mean they're that they're super crisp, but it's just they're. Yeah, these are. Uh, I just I, my frustration is that why render them to this detail? Why put that much detail into them? When you know it's going to look nothing like that in the engine, it's going to lose all the detail. Well, I think why are you going down to the level of putting the the finger marks on there? And I think that's what's so frustrating is <sighs> why? I mean, you ask the question, why? When is this? Nobody's ever going to see this detail. What is the benefit of unless it's being used for another game, which is might be what we're heading towards, where there's another simultaneous project going on that's going to involve these same weapons? Maybe that's the only thing I can. Think I don't of. know. I don't know. Like that's the thing is, I mean, if if this were a AAA engine where it was DirectX 12, you know, you could 
say, all right, someone could, when they're doing inspect their weapon type of a thing, like you see all that detail. We know that there's, I mean, you could pull up any screenshot of H1Z1 and look at the level of detail. Everything is blurry, blotchy, like nothing, nothing looks good in H1Z1. No, it does So I just, I, I just, I just find it annoying that they go through and they, they post this and say, Hey, look at the new guns coming. That's not the new guns. Like let's make them out of Play-Doh and then we'll see what they look like in the game. But that's not <laughs> what the new guns look like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, exactly. No, nothing like that. So just, that's just a more of an, an annoyance for me. I just, I, I look at that and I just wish they would have more true to advertising. It's like, if you were going in and, and you were buying something and they, and, and you went, and in the advertisement, they showed a picture of something that looked really wonderful. But then when you got there, it's like, well, this doesn't look like anything like what you advertised. You'd be mad. Yes. I feel like they're doing the same thing with this. It's like, like look at our game. Like, and, ca like getting catfished on, uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, what's the website? Uh, uh, crap. I can't think of it. Um, but yeah, like getting catfished. Yeah, exactly. It's false advertising. Yeah. I mean, they're saying, look at our game, look at our game. Well, show me what the game looks like. You know, show it just, I just. The game doesn't look anything like that, so we'll see. Um, it's it'll just, be it's fun. annoying. What we could do is if we remember, let's show these and then show, once they get into the game, let's take a picture of it and let's show what it actually looks like. And, and I we think, can show those at some point side by side. I think Lance put it in chat. Uh, he did. He said they're trying to compete with the weapon reveals of PUBG. That's right. I mean, that's probably more what this is because PUBG does but a... PUBG is, is, is a DirectX 12 game. But my point is, is PUBG does this big elaborate screenshot where you know the gun is sitting there there's a bullet flying out of the chamber there's a you know there's a rounds laying on the on the desk or on the table that it's on the lighting is really grungy and dark i think that's what they're trying to similarly do but the problem is those the guns in that they don't while they don't look just like that they look similar um yeah so i mean that's you know that's I mean, there's a lot of the detail is still there. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's not going to be down to the level of where you're seeing the grunge on the, the barrel, but it's 99% there. Uh, with this, I mean, when you when you go to H1Z1, I, you're losing 75% at least of the detail. I mean, probably more than that. So. Yeah, very true. Uh, anyways, uh, so... As far as updates, the uh, other changes they've done in this, the initial safe zone size has been increased by 10%, making it slightly easier to get to. The initial safe zone size um, time is now two minutes up from one minute, 30 seconds. They reduced the safe zone timers from phases two to six um, to one minute, 15 seconds down from a minute, 30 seconds. So they're pr trying to keep the pace of the game going a little bit faster. Added two additional safe zones for more gradual but more frequent match progression they increase the speed of gas movement from phases two to six um, the time uh, to complete now is 45 seconds from one minute they decrease the gas damage um, from phases six to nine uh, to nine damage per second down from 12 to 15 and then they tightened up the gas center migration for phase two and three this will cause the safe zones to center on themselves slightly more to remove the um, rng which is the randomness from safe zone progression. And then they removed the 1911 from the game. So there is no 1911 in the game anymore. All 1911 skins have been moved over to the M9 skin. Uh, blood effects have been changed back to the classic, classic mist effect. So it's no longer a splatter. Shoe types are now a tiered system from starter shoes all the way up to the ultra rare spawning tier three conveys, uh, which each has a unique sound effect. They have the same foot they have the same footstep volume. So they have a starter shoe, which is tier one, which gives you a base run speed buff and a base fall damage reduction. Then the work boots, which is tier two, which is a, a rare spawn, medium run speed buff and medium fall damage re uh, reduction. And then the conveys, which is tier three, which is an ultra rare spawn, highest run speed buff and highest fall damage reduction. So, and then the tactical and motorcycle helmets have been consolidated into a single category. Now you can pick your favorite skin and it will show on your character regardless of what helmet you pick up, which I'm assuming is means that there's no longer the face, you know, difference of one uh, helmet having a face protection and the other one doesn't. Um, it sounds like it's just all general helmet now. And then they had some bug fixes um, on here that 
we will not cover right now. So that's pretty much it. All righty. Thank you for that, Brian. Um, now, um, one thing I do want to mention, they're having a free week. So if anyone doesn't have H1Z1 or maybe you want to punish someone, uh, they're having a free stop week being of so H1Z1 negative. from... <laughs> sorry. Uh, December 14th through the 21st. So in two days, you'll be able to play it all the way through um, the winter, was it winter solstice, the shortest day of the year, my birthday. When's your birthday? The 21st? December 21st. Yes. I didn't get you anything. (laughs) That's fine. I forgive you. (laughs) So I'm supposed to say your friendship is enough. Yeah. Thank you very much. (laughs) That wasn't good. Your, your, Uh, Your compassion, the podcast (laughs) <laughs> yeah um, and so uh it's so uh, yeah so that'll be that free week december 14th through the 21st which i wonder if that if people will be hacking like crazy on free accounts all week just to test all their stuff because if you get banned what's the difference it's a free steam account yeah you have to make a new steam account um you have to make a new steam account but i'm saying if you're gonna do hacks like just create a whole bunch of accounts and if it gets banned you don't lose anything True. Yeah, I mean, that's a good point. Um, all right. W- uh, where do we want to go from here? All right. Well, let's go and do We want to do the first uh, roll for the first. Oh, category. yeah. I'm sorry. I thought. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought you'd done that. My bad. Nope. All right. So, congratulations, Unicorn Joe. Oh, Long time listener. Our, our best friend. Yes. From Australia. Uh, our, the man from Down Under. I believe. I don't believe. I have not heard of any other Australian listeners. So if there is another no. one, I would appreciate it. If you're you from Australia, out. let us know because Dethrone right Joe. We over well, I mean, we're not Unicorn Joe. But we like him. You'll but, become you'll become our favorite Australian listener. Th- I mean, we are Maybe. looking we are actively searching for a new favorite Australian <laughs> listener. So if anybody if anybody is, is, is interested in filling that gap, please get in touch with me. Uh Brian at infectionpodcast.com. <laughs> <Thanks. Okay. laughs> All right. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so I will send you, you know, the, the drill, I will send you a message and it should be in your other messages, but I think we might follow each other on Twitch. So it might go into your regular messages. So, all right. Uh, Conan Exiles has made an announcement this week. Yes. That they are actually, actually are setting a release date. They said they were, so, um, I remember this, I, I was going to pull it, unfortunately got caught up with stuff didn't have a chance to do it but i think it was either at pax when i interviewed jens eric or when we we had him on the show twice maybe just once um they were very clear from day one with we had him on i think we had him on before the game released i believe is what happened we had him on like the couple days before the game released and they made it very very clear he made it clear this game was going they had a date for coming out of early access and Yep. Let us know, Brian, but it, it appears they're going to hold up that end of the bargain. Yep. So the official date is full is full launch on May 8th. So May 8th, 2018, uh, be launching on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. So, so I would say... Full... I'm sorry. Yep. I would say that will be the full, the full release on there, so that'll be good. Um, I know they've been putting out a lot of content, trying to get it polished, but uh, I, I don't know like how much of a future is in this game. I don't know how much long term, but I think it's good that they're not dragging it out, and not saying, "Oh, we're going to reinvent." I mean, they're they're like, "Here's the game," you know, and they're they're getting it as many bugs out of it as they can, putting in as much content as they can, but we're going to release by this date. Um, and then if they want to add to it after that, that's fine. Have DLC or whatever you want to add after that but it's good that they're not dragging it out um, forever. So Yeah, and, and I and I appreciate that. And I mean, here's the thing. The game isn't the game hasn't been a whopping. They sold an unbelievable amount of copies on launch, but since then, yeah. um it hasn't, you know, it hasn't it hasn't been anything. It hasn't been lights out for um for 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 Conan Exiles or for um who the, who the hell makes this game? Um a fu- a Funcom. Funcom. You know, it hasn't been the, the the players have dipped. There was a whole bunch of issues with the server and that ping perfect at the beginning. So it's it's been nothing. It's been a lackluster start. But they can say that we released this game. Here's the final version, and then they can take 
all of those development minds and transition them to their next project. And that's kind of the goal. That needs to be the goal with early access is build a development team, get the game, push it out to a point where you could take maybe a quarter of those developers and just have them maintain. And then you can take the core of that team and you know, then they can make the next great thing. Um, yeah. Now they do have the pricing is revealed on here, which I, I appreciate them on the pricing. So the game at early access was 29 bucks, 30 bucks, 29.99. Instead of making it a $60 title, which is what they could have easily done, it's been done before, it'll be done again, They are, it's going to be $40. So they're, they're adding, they're taxing $10 on top of it for the early access. So this game is going to be $39.99. Uh, $40 will be the final price of this game once it's released. That is a realistic price. I would say at $40, if you have a group of people to play with, you will probably enjoy this game. At sixty, I would say no. It's a it's a no go at sixty dollars. But at forty dollars, it's probably worth it. And um, you know, there's a chance you can find it on sale for, um, you know, for for less. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I'm sure once it gets out to G two A, <laughs> it'll be even cheaper. But uh, and there's a lot of copies of it out there right now. Um, but yeah, this will be uh be interesting. We'll have to play it. We'll have to play their final version. Yes. Once, once they get released, we'll uh, go and play it as a group and see how polished it is. Because we've played it every every however many months. And uh, I mean, it's a fun game. It's just there's like bugs that need to be fixed that I'm hoping that will be. The last time we played, I mean, there wasn't a huge amount of bugs. I don't remember um, a huge no. amount of game breaking bugs game breaking we kind of ran around and, and just tried out some of the new stuff so and it was it was fun now um do, do you want to show the trailer for this or do you do you do you not care yeah you can i i don't i didn't see anything that was really new but i'm um, going to play it and they I, they may show some yeah so um new content yeah i mean we typically show this i've got i've got it i've got it here i just have to get it queued up if you could uh okay but um yeah this is a i mean this is a big deal this Conan again, as I as I said earlier, I'm trying not to sound like a broken record, but they made it very clear we are not going to just sit here and labor a, you know, a game. When it's ready to be released, it'll be released, and and we're seeing now it's going to be released. So this is the this is the Conan Exiles trail. It's about a minute long, and it shows off some of the uh, some some of the stuff that's going to be in the uh, in in the final version of the game here. Peggy eighteen. And uh, there's the there's the trailer for it. nothing no, nothing crazy just a launch trailer, um, but uh, yeah there you go Conan Exiles that's that's that is very significant news I don't think ever I don't think people realize that it's a, that is a huge deal. And they and if you look at that game they have a lot of very groundbreaking type of features in the game I and mean, their building system is very similar to Arc as far as the flexibility of it. Um, but they, they came out with the climbing system first, I think. Yeah, like yes, what, they did. Uh, other games are starting to do it, but they came out with it first. Um, uh, they have like the character. I mean, the, the characters are very detailed. The world has a lot of detail. I don't think it gets enough, enough credit. Uh, I, I don't think they get enough credit for a lot of the things that they came out. They did well compared to a lot of other companies that, either didn't put anything like that at all or they put in such broken versions. I mean, th this one, there were broken times in it, but they put in some pretty cool features that seem to work pretty well. So we'll have to give it a try and see how it goes. There you go. All right. So um, let's go ahead and jump back up to the long dark. And there's okay. actually a video uh, I don't think that, I uh, that 
Okay, there's yeah, there's a video that goes through this announcement that covers pretty much everything in here. So I'm sorry, if I didn't we can download that, I can do that though real quick. So what is this okay. that what is this uh, that we're gonna be watching? So this is the 1.16 release of the Long Dark. Now this game is released, but they put out an update, and this one's called Rugged Sentinel. Uh, this was put out on December 7th, so this past week, uh, and this one is uh, just adding to. They've actually added a, quite a bit to the the game. So if if you've played it and you haven't played it since release, because they added a whole new game mode as far as like a single player story mode to the game. Uh, but here's some extra stuff they're adding to more to the survival part of the game. All right. So um, th this is uh, the long dark. Rugged Sentinel. Hello everyone. This is Raphael, creative director of The Long Dark. Today I'm excited to tell you about the new features and content we've added in our December update called Rugged Sentinel. In episode one of Wintermute, we introduced the ill-fated town of Milton, nestled in the mountains of Great Bear and home to Grey Mother. The story of Milton reveals a window into the history of Great Bear events that explain the island's general degradation and economic collapse prior to the lights in the sky that bring Mackenzie and Astrid crashing into the dark wilderness. In Rugged Sentinel, we're opening Milton up to survival mode exploration, so you can experience it as a lone survivor, scrambling your way up the cliff sides of Forlorn Muskeg, or through the musty cave system near the Trapper's Homestead in Mystery Lake. Milton, or Mountain Town as it's known in survival mode, offers a range of new locations to scavenge from and survive in, and its addition expands our explorable world to 50 square kilometers. We want to ensure that everyone who tries Wintermute discovers an engaging story of survival in the aftermath of the geomagnetic event that brings Mackenzie and Astrid into the world of the Long Dark. But because not everyone who experiences Wintermute comes at it with the same level of expertise, some having first put thousands of hours into the game's survival mode, the first two episodes of Wintermute didn't always provide the level of challenge people were looking for. In Rugged Sentinel, we're adding story experience modes based on the same idea as the survival mode experiences, but tuned specifically for Wintermute. Between green, capable, and hardened survivor experiences, you should be able to find the balance between survival and exploration, between story and challenge that you're looking for. A long-standing community request has been the ability to personalize aspects of survival mode challenge levels, making the game as meditative, balanced, or as stressful as you wish. We're happy to announce that starting in Rugged Sentinel, you'll now be able to create a custom experience mode based on your preferred settings. We've exposed over 50 variables that modify things like gear availability, wildlife behavior, and weather, so that you can find the perfect balance based on your own tastes. Each combination of settings produces a shareable code so anyone, across any platform, can share their custom experience mode with each other. This functionality does not replace mod support, which is still in our roadmap, but we hope it serves as a useful stopgap until we can properly support deeper customization and user-generated content. Another piece of feedback we heard a lot after we launched Wintermute was that our save system didn't really foster the kind of exploration and experimentation we had hoped for. You found the limitations of the save system prevented you from trying things, and what's worse, it could sometimes trap you between two unfavorable save points, forcing players to replay parts of the game. To address this, we've completely redesigned the save system in Wintermute, so that you can now save anytime, anywhere. We've also added a timed autosave and a quick save, along with the checkpoints that existed before. Between all these options, we're confident you'll always be able to roll back to a tenable position, no matter how badly things happen to go for you. Keep in mind that we haven't touched the save system in survival mode. You still need to rest or pass time to save, and we still delete your save upon death. Permadeath has always been a core part of the survival mode experience. And finally, the moment you've all been waiting for, the moose. We've added this big brute to the game. The moose shares aspects of the deer and the bear. It wanders peacefully in forest glades and clearings. You can often tell by the signs of antler rubbings on the tree trunks but beware provoking the moose. Its charge and devastating stomp attacks can leave you stunned with one or more broken rib afflictions. Broken ribs prevent you from climbing and also limit your carrying capacity, and they take several days to fully recover from. So be wary of these beasts. They are so much more than your next easy meal. 
If you do find yourself successfully hunting the moose, you'll be rewarded not just with a store of high energy meat, but also with a hide which, when dried, can be used to craft two new gear items. The moose hide cloak, a heavy outer layer that provides high physical protection and maximum waterproofness, and the moose hide satchel, a small bag worn in the accessory slot which expands your maximum carrying capacity by 5 kilograms. Besides these major additions to the game, Rugged Sentinel includes dozens of bug fixes and quality of life improvements, including a general weight modifier that makes clothes you are wearing weigh less than those in your pack. We've also done some environment beautification around locations like the Quonset in Coastal Highway, and you'll notice that all regions now showcase aurorified lighting at night, when the aurora is active in the sky. For those who didn't complete episode 2, you'll notice that the aurora makes predators even more hostile to the extent they ignore the traditional threats of flares and fires, so count on the unnatural aurora lighting to provide protection. Best of luck in Rugged Sentinel, and we'll see you in the Quiet Apocalypse. Thanks for watching, and on behalf of the entire team at Hinterland, I wish you all a wonderful and safe holiday season. Or Merry Christmas. Um, but uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the that's the long dark uh, video. Th this is not my game. I mean, this is just too. It's too much. It's just it's too much for me. So we got people saying, "Is it worth thirty four ninety nine? Okay, Brian. Hold before on, you zoom before in before you go and buy it. Before you go and buy it, the second. This is the next humble bundle monthly. No, oh. if you want this, you can get it for twelve dollars plus. A whole bunch of other games this game is on the humble bundle monthly so if you go when you sign up now for humble bundle monthly you can click it and it will give you the this game right now so if you wanted it at a discount um it's an excellent game really really good game um and this one i've been talking about this one for a long time before they came out with the with the story mode and all that and the, this company the company that put this out had just done such an awesome job of um, meeting expectations and in areas for me, you know, I, I don't know what other, other expectations maybe people that kickstarted it had, but, um, you know, they've, they've, met, they've exceeded the expectations of what I thought I was getting when I bought the game. So, uh, this is something that, uh, if, if you're interested in getting it, make sure you first click our link on our website. If you go to support us on the website, there's a Humble Bundle link, which will just give us a kickback for you having subscribed on the Humble Bundle monthly. But if you're looking to get it cheaper than buying it off of Steam, uh, then go get the month. You don't have to do the monthly next month. You can just get this month's monthly. You'll get it for $12 plus Quantum Break, Dawn of War 3, which is a Warhammer game, um, plus probably three or four other games that they add into there afterwards. So. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I would just, uh, if you're interested, if you're into survival games like that and you like having a challenge, this is one of those game that, games that really has a challenge. It goes through and it, it just pushes you against the environment. Um, it has some really cool mechanics. The new story mode is really fun to go through and just kind of play through um, to where it's not 100% of you just trying to survive all the time and like pushes you through a story that has save points. Um, if you die, you, can, you go back to the last save point. So, uh, yeah, because like Grizzly Bear's bringing up, you know, after H1Z1, he canceled his uh, his thing. So what I did is on, on that is I paused mine. So I paused mine just to give him a very clear, like, I don't want this game uh, for H1Z1. And I paused it. So now mine's reactivated for the Long Dark and Quantum Break, which I don't have either of those games. I don't really play Warhammer games. But for those, those games, uh, the Long Dark will give away a copy of that since I already own it. Um, well, there you go based on the humble bundle so yes if you're going to uh purchase that humble bundle like i see some people in chat saying oh i'm going to resubscribe please head on over to our website infectionpodcast.com forward slash support click the humble button button before and it'll give us credit for your resubscribe so and then uh, it'll give us yeah it'll give us credit for having now lance says if you're into survival games he's going to say but you know why are they listening to the podcast um pub g uh king of the kill <laughs> All those games are not survival games. <gasps> those are not survival games. I'm sorry to break it to you, but some Very of the games upsetting. that a lot of people come and listen to us or watch us for um, are not survival games. So we actually have some people, and, and I don't want to say this, but Firebomb Friday the 13th is not a survival game. Oh, shots um, fired. <laughs> wow. 
I mean, you're trying to survive, but it's not what we consider a survival game, right? Well, I mean, and it's not you against the world. Wow. This, The Long Dark is probably one of the most survival game, most survival-y survival games that are out there right now. If, if you're looking something that you would truly consider a survival game, I think The Long Dark has got it the closest that I've seen any game come to being a true survival game. So, yeah, and I, don't, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to word it, but it, it's the, it's actually a survival game. Yeah, I mean, I'm not one that's I, I I I like survival games. Obviously, I'm here doing the survival podcast. Um, but this this game is just too much. No. <laughs> like, I I mean, can, can, you I, might enjoy the story mode, like kind of just picking it up, going through there. But you, I don't think you'd enjoy the the open world part of it. I mean, it's incredibly intense survival. Yeah, I, where no, I don't you're think. just trying to sit there and, and you're counting calories. You're like, oh man, I I've got this much food, which means I get this much calories, which means I can ha I can survive for this long if I go outside and I'm just trying to walk to this next area to be able to, <laughs> you know, to survive. It, it's it's intense. So yeah, I, it's it's, it it's not my fun. kind of game. But if it is your type of game, would recommend you use our uh, link over at infectionpodcast.com forward slash support, and of course. Uh, Appreciate everybody, uh, you yeah, know, supporting the program uh, any way that they can. So, yep. what? Uh, where do we go? All right. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go to Ark now. Okay. You, there's not a ton to cover other than Aberration did release today. Finally, after many yes. many delays, Aberly, Aberration is about a month and a half behind. I think is what it's, it ended up being. It's behind, man. So let's go through some of the pat. Let's go through the actual patch first. We'll talk about the things that are arc wide first, and then we'll talk a little bit about Aberration. Um, so one thing they did is on this is two seven five dot zero. So this was the patch that they put out today. Uh, and they did parallel multi-threaded render for faster SM5 graphic. So that should improve performance, um, graphics performance. Heavy turret no longer has a tracking time. Heavy turret health increased by 50%. Heavy turret base damage increased from 260 to 300. So those are all the heavy turret changes. Stegos now have reduced armor, now have reduced armor reduction on their plating from 0.4 to 0.15. Uh, Im imprinting intervals increase from four to eight hours between each imprint. Each imprint gives a large amount of imprint bonus per imprint. We will also scale the server's mature rate. Shader models have been approved. The tech turret, now here's a bunch of tech turret things. Tech turret projectile pr uh, speed improved by 50%. Tech turret explosive damage increased by 25%. Um, actually, did I say the speed was by 50%? Oh, sorry, the speed was 50% damage by 25%. Tector direct damage increased by 50%. Tector rage increased by 30%. Tector int, uh, interp speed increased by 40%. Um, then they fixed water rendering on Mac and Linux. And then they added a new server configuration for cross arc allow foreign dino downloads to allow non aberration dinos on aberration. So if you want to be able to bring in other non aberration dinos into the new map, you can do that. And then now they have a page that's dedicated to the aberration update. There wasn't a ton of information out there originally, uh, but they do have on here a video. I don't know. If, do you want to play the launch trailer? Is it easy for you to um, play here? Yes. It's on that. Yes, I can play that. In a it's minute the beginning here. of that first page. Yep. It's about a minute and a half, 40, 41 seconds. I've got to wait for the page. So their oh. forms are extremely okay. slow. Um, yeah, so this is, yeah, the aberration. Um, this this trailer was released today. So if you haven't gone and uh, checked it out today, then this will be some new things for you. And there's a lot of new creatures in here, um, some new mechanics. So it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, I have it, and I'll probably be playing it some this weekend. Cool. All right. Maybe I'm not sure if we'll put up a server. We'll see how many people actually play it. Got See it. if we have a server so, to go up. So here's the Arc Aberration Expansion launch trailer.
Well, there is uh, Arc Aberrations, of course, playarc.com for that. And I do apologize to anybody listening. We've shown a whole bunch of videos tonight. Um, yeah. But uh, it, all the links are on our website, infectionpodcast.com. So if you, you I, and I'd recommend you check out all of them. They're all very cool. Um, yeah. Now there's a, I don't know if you want to flip through some of these pictures. If you click, you can click the pictures and they go full screen or they go bigger. Yeah, um, yeah, them all but they have there. some some screens screenshots that I haven't seen yet before this. And it actually, if it, there's a right arrow that let you jump between them. Oh well, if, if you're able to just right. show the page. Good idea. Let me start that again then. Uh, all right, Make it easier. Yes, appreciate that. All right, here we go. All right, yeah. So I mean, here's a new creature. Um, like a, I mean, Th this is look, like the ant eater some... thing that like, climbs stuff. Yeah. Well. If you go back, like go back to the one where you're kind of in that room, that creature is the same as the next one. That's I what I meant. Yeah, it's like it's climbing. It's climbing a branch upside down. Yeah. Uh, and after that, like the, a lot more color in this one. Yes, for sure. Looks very nice. Uh, you know, of course, they're using some of the mechanics. Like there's the snake, but it's a very unique looking snake. Uh, a lot of the same kind of creatures, but yeah, very, very different. It, there's a lot of work that went into this one. Unbelievable. I mean, this yeah. is much different than any of their other maps that they put out. Plus that new flying mechanic is pretty crazy. It'll be interesting to go in there and, and actually play this. So, yeah, Arc Aberration. So, um, and then the last one, there's actually, a, it shows their dev team, which uh, if you wanted, if you're curious about how big their dev team, that's, the, yeah, that's the Aberration dev team. Yeah, and I mean that's, that's a uh, that's legit working on the game, as I as the yep. kids would say. Yeah, and so I, they're pretty excited. And this is, I think, the last uh, official DLC. I think there was there's like three DLCs, if I'm correct. Um, or is there? Let's see. They've they've got this Scorched is their Earth. second. So isn't there supposed to be a third one? I don't know. Um, I, I don't have the DLC, uh, the 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 expansion stuff. So I, I I thought there was supposed to be three, but this is their this is definitely their second one. They've only had Scorched Earth and then this one. If that was the question. Yeah, and I was just trying to think. I thought that there was supposed to be. Ph is saying three, there's one more. He believes. So yeah, so there's going to be a third one. Okay, that's what I thought. And I was like, I, I know I paid for Scorched Earth originally, and they they did give me a discount for having purchased Scorched Earth originally. And then picking up the season pass. So, so like now, if I get the season pass, well, I already have it, but it says it would be 66% off, $15.29 for the season pass. And I don't know why I already own it. So, so I'll say this uh, quickly because we are kind of running towards the end of the show here. What will the outrage be on this DLC? Because the last DLC wasn't that the DLC was bad. It was that the game was in early access and they couldn't, you know, how dare they charge for something additional even though i mean look at those freaking pictures folks open your eyes and look at these damn pictures and tell me this wasn't an immense amount of work an immense amount yeah. of work i mean you just this isn't some half-ass dlc this is a crazy amount of work so well and if you if you look at like scorched earth it was polished like there, yes. there was a lot of new art in it and it they did a very good job of making a nice map uh this one a lot of of unique art in it all very new and they're using some mechanics so the same mechanics but a lot of work went into making that so uh congratulations congratulations to studio wildcard so i i mean real quickly brian do you think that, what's the objection going to be here i i think that people have already i mean the season pass has been out for a while i think i think people are they'll have no reason to be mad now i mean it, they, there's nothing they can say about the the DLC itself and say, well, that's not worth whatever they're adding, you know, charging for this DLC because between scorched earth, you know, the $30 or whatever it is between scorched earth, this and whatever the future one's going to be like this map alone is well worth a huge chunk of that DLC cost or the, the season pass cost. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see how, I, I think that people, were just mad because they were they wanted something to complain about <laughs> yeah, on this when the original one came out with the whole scorched earth thing uh but we we all have known that that arc was 
way past a lot of other games that supposedly came out of of early access but were nowhere near as polished as arc was at, in in early access so i know i never was on that bandwagon of getting mad at them i thought i thought it was just fine i bought scorched earth you pay for content what i paid like, for. like a rational person yeah yeah and i don't expect them to put out endless stuff for free like there's a point where if you want quality stuff you got to pay for it because you saw that whole page of developers and people that are on that team. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that the, that's what this DLC is paying for. I mean, the fact they're charging it, they have to hire all those people, those people to make all this unique content. And you want to know a, a surprise when people aren't paying you, people don't get hired. That's so, for sure. You can only do charity work for so like long. This. So anyway, so that's, right. uh, yeah, so that's aberration. So, uh, if you have the season pass, uh, you can get that now. And then, as I said, we'll be working on getting some sort of a, we don't know how many people have it. So I'll throw up a server and we'll see if it's active, you know, and may maybe just kind of explore the map together and go through some of it. Um, but we'll see how many people jump on. We'll have it. Maybe if you're not in our gaming community right now, uh, it, this would be an excellent opportunity to jump on our discord. And we can get you in there to come run around with us and explore the new aberration. And we'd love to have you. And we'll, I'm, I'm planning on doing that this weekend. Well, cool. Cool. Very so. cool. Um, yeah, we'd love, we'd absolutely love to have you as a, uh, as a member of our community. So, uh, and of course, if all that information is on our website, infectionpodcast.com. So, um, I, we got one, we got one more thing, Brian. This is, we're actually going to get through all the notes this week, which has been the first time in about yes. a month. So uh, what, what's so wrapping up One thing up I was here? just going to mention is the Black Death. Um, they put out a new patch that was mainly bug fixes uh, this time. Okay. Uh, they, one thing they did add that was new is they, you know, they now have three tiers of bags that you can craft uh, to increase your carrying weight. But other than that, uh, there's a lot of fixes that they put in this and balancing. They did optimize the UI. So if you're playing the Black Death, uh, go check it out because in the last three months, like they've, they've done an amazing amount of work on it. And it's it's definitely becoming a fun game. Unturned put out a patch here. This was on the eighth. This is three point twenty two point zero point zero. They added they accepted the bunker area that uh, it says as, by Danaby who created it as a timed curated arena map. So kind of like what you're saying, have see have stuff that's in for a while. Uh, so here he actually had it to where they have a timed curated arena map on here um and then they added pa max packets per second server config option to uh which kicks spamming players so if you have someone on there that's just typing a bunch or sending a lot of data to the server that they shouldn't be doing a lot of things um you can adjust that so that it uh it actually limits it they improved server to or server to rate limit this improved server to rate limit several more potentially spammable actions, improved admin buildable editor to hide rotation and compression um, tweaks. They tweaked vehicle to show blocked message when unable to reach entrance. Then they fixed from fixes from the Hawaii team for several melee items and huts, and then fixed showing published workshop items in submit menu with more than 50 items. So that's the latest update for unturned. Now and he has a picture of it showing the uh, the arena timed curated map on there. Yes. Um, now we missed some news with Unturned Brian. This somehow slipped through the cracks. I got an email about this, or I got a message from a friend earlier this week. Did you know about Unturned Four Point Oh? Yes, and I actually had it in the show notes a couple weeks ago, and we missed it. But we that's one where we I, I mentioned it in passing, just because we didn't have time. Uh, yeah. But they he does he has a dev blog. Yes. That goes through talking about, and if you go look at some of the previous show notes for the last couple of weeks, I do have links to, I think, two or three of them. Now, the big thing with this is it's moving from Unre uh, from Unity to Unreal, which is a much yes. superior engine, um, at least for a kind of game like this. So uh, the goal here would be to, we'll hopefully be able to get Nelson back on the show sometime in the new year to talk about moving. Because, and this is the great thing about him. He is at, he is unturned like when and, and this isn't a this isn't a shot at anybody else that we've interviewed but when we interviewed nelson about hey what do you think you know what's this like he built unturned not knowing how to make games 
and he just yeah. built the game and it is what it is now. And now he's now relearning how to build the game on um on the new uh, on the new engine. So that's pretty cool. Now, and one thing with with him, uh I think we were one of the first interviews that he's done um on camera. Hmm. I think he had mentioned that we are maybe the first or and only on camera interview that he's ever done. I mean, which uh, here, uh, uh, Brian, <laughs> I mean, let, let's be, I, I mean, I'm not trying to say anything. I'm not trying to start any crap, uh-huh. but we're kind of a big deal. I, okay. what, do, what do you want me to say? What do you, what do you want me to say? We're a big deal. Well, now when we had, when we had him on, um, there was an crazy amount of fans. Like, I don't, I, they, I'm sure they got a term from themselves. Like bronies have a term for themselves. Whack pack, like Howard Stern's whack packers, yeah. Yeah, he, they, they, yeah. The, but they're like the whack pack for him. Yeah, they just love people him. that. Yeah, they were they were they were going nuts in chat and on Twitter and just like his fans are intense. So I, th- I thought that was that was pretty interesting. I mean, I'm just not surprised. So, <laughs> I, mean, I, I just I don't know. Try it. I don't know what I'm supposed to say. All right. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty much, that's uh, yeah. pretty much. Do we want to do this last uh, yeah. game giveaway? Yes, sir. Let's what announce that. All right. So I, I don't know. Um, do you want to, I don't have it pulled up here. I don't, I don't have the links. Um, what? I don't have my links up. All right. So I'm going to do giving players? away a, yeah, if you could, and yes. then I'll, I'll make sure I have the right links. All right. Well, okay, um, well, we're going to do current players here now. Actually, you know, I'll stall with this, Brian. So we're, we're gonna. I, I've got full current players like like uh, like I do each, each and every week. But I do real quickly before we actually do current players. I want to talk about two games real quickly: H one Z one, and then we're gonna talk about the PUBG test server. So the H one uh, just survive. We read that post earlier in the show um, that the game is going to. Uh, or, uh, they're dealing with hackers now because there's a whole bunch more people playing the game. And actually, turns out that that's actually, co- that's actually an accurate statement, so I'll have to eat a shoe on that one. Um, this is the chart for the last three months. The players are up. Um, a significant, I mean, literally, there was like 700 people playing as a peak. They were peaking on weekends of close to 2,000. Um, there's a couple more people playing it, maybe another 1,000, tw- maybe another 2,000 people playing um, so I guess you would see the the hackers go up, but that turns out that actually wasn't that inaccurate of a statement. So I guess I'll have to kind of shut up about that. <laughs> um, all right. So all right, I've, I've got all the links in order now. Sorry okay. about that. I just wanted to make sure that it, it was a valid one that I'm giving away. So I'm going to be giving away a copy of Rise of the Tomb Raider. This is a $60 game. So this is a AAA title. Um, if you haven't played this, this is a very, very great, fun game to play. I, I've played it and pretty much beat it. I've put in 17 hours through the storyline so far on it. Um, but this is Rise of the to- Tomb Raider. The recent reviews, overwhelmingly positive. Um, all reviews, very positive. I mean, it, I mean, this is a Tomb Raider series. I mean, it's an adventure action, Laura Croft, female protagonist. She has her own, like, tag, Laura Croft. So... There you go. But this is, it has a really good story. The graphics are excellent. The mechanics are, are great. Uh, if you have not played Rise of the Tomb Raider, just enter the bundle. I mean, this is a $60 title, so. Absolutely. Enter it. Um, all right. And then one other quick number two. So uh, the test server for PUBG, the peak for the test server, this is the test server. Are you ready for this, Brian? Two hundred thirty-five thousand two hundred forty-nine, almost a quarter of a million people on the test server. That is higher than both Ark and H one Z one's all-time players combined. Yeah, that's huge. Crazy. I mean, that is insanity. So a successful game looks like. I'm just saying, if they can draw literally a quarter of a million people to their test server i mean these other games should be able to pull a decent amount of players i guess that was that was my point doesn't really make any sense but uh all right so now i'll actually get into 
actual current players. Uh, and of course, as we do each and every week, go through some of the games that we talk about, some of the top games we talk about, and tell you who the heck is playing them all. So, all right, starting off this week, as it does each and every week, H1Z1, King of the Kill, or H1Z1. Currently playing this, 7,312, the 24-hour peak, 21,473, with a 70 peak of 36,445. Moving on to Ark Survival Evolved, 31,322 people currently playing that. The 24-hour peak, 36,306, with a 70 peak of 52,826. Conan Exiles, we talked about this. This game's coming out in May. Currently playing this, 1,966. A few short of 2,000 there. The 24-hour peak, 2,830, with a 70 peak of 3,780. So nothing crazy, but people are playing this game. Moving on to PUBG, currently playing this, 461,235 is your current player. The 24-hour peak, 2,668,501, and a 70 peak of 2,000,000. 913,526. Now, what's important about that number is this is the second time now that the PUBG all time has not hit the seven day peak. Now, my quick guesstimate here, Brian, would be that the test server drew people away from the actual game, which looking at this looks like it's pretty possible. So, yeah. They their their delay towards they may not hit three hundred thousand by the end of the year. Three million. Oh, excuse me. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> three million. They may not hit three million by the end of the year, specifically because of this damn test server. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, not that we'll it matters. See. Well, but, okay. So so they're supposedly releasing that to live before the end of the year, like right before the end of the year. So that will probably be the spur of getting it to over 3 million right before the end of the year it happens. So yeah. I'm sure we still will hit it. There you go. So very good. All right. Is there anything else we needed to cover before tip of the week? Uh, I don't think so. So remember, um, we'll be doing PUBG test this Friday. So for our game of the week, and that will be at 8 PM Eastern. So if you can join us, make sure you jump into our Discord and we'll get going on that. Uh, make sure you have it downloaded and ready to go. Um, so yeah, uh, tip of the week is where I go through and either I'll give a general gaming tip or for a specific game this week, I'm going to be doing it for The Long Dark, which is an excellent game, part of the Humble Bundle. And we talked about it. We'll have some links in our show notes if you want to go and learn more about The Long Dark. So this is tip of the week. <laughs> All right, so in the long dark, you may find yourself uh, near freezing and uh, out in the middle of nowhere, and you need to warm up. So one thing I can suggest is look for a car. Um, so if you can get inside of a car, that will give you some protection. It will help block wind and provide a slight warmth bonus. But uh, a trick that you may not know is if you set up a fire outside of the car, it will actually warm you up inside of the car. Not following physics very well, but it does work in this game. So build a, a fire outside of the vehicle, and that actually does permeate through the vehicle and warm you up inside the vehicle, plus the bonus uh, protection from the vehicle itself. Uh, now, one thing, if you're if you're really looking for the most most benefit possible out of this, build the fire on the side opposite of the wind. So put the fire so that's not in the wind, uh, and it'll actually help the fire to stay on stronger. And uh, that will help make it last as long as possible. Also, uh, just on a side note, as you're going around and looting, uh, you'll find coffee and tea around the uh, around the map. And during the day, just every chance during the day that you're needing to be awake, drink as much coffee as you can. And then at night, when you're ready to go to sleep, drink tea because that actually puts you to sleep. So, um, so coffee in the in the day, just like you would think in real life, except for tea and does have some caffeine in it but in here it help, it helps you sleep so and you should find these around the map so that is tip of the week all righty and thank you very much for that brian um as we said uh 
we're playing PUBG Test this week, and then the week after, which is just to be two days before Christmas, uh, we're going to be playing the Overwatch event. And I would imagine Overwatch will be p- p- played probably throughout, from probably starting today through through Christmas. Um, yeah, people getting all their crates. Yeah, exactly. People getting the crates. I'm all those things that are gambling and illegal, and I'm sure the outlaw <laughs> soon enough. Yeah, I don't want to go there. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, hope get ready for that. Uh, down, you do have to download the PUBG thing as a separate server. It's it's a separate game. It's a it's a full standalone game. So you have to download that and create a character name and stuff. So go ahead and do that beforehand and get yourself all uh, prepared and ready to go. Yep, very good. All right, so let's go and roll in this last uh, this last giveaway. So congratulations. Now, Landgun, don't I thought you had this game. He was the one who recommended it to me. Do you not have this one? I want to make sure. I think he maybe recommended one of the other Tomb Raider ones to me. Let's, I, let's just make sure. I, I, don't, think he we, ha- I don't think he has this one. Okay. Because he recommended to me one, maybe one of the other Tomb Raider ones. Because uh, he loves this series. Like he's the ultimate Laura Croft fanboy <laughs> out there. So <clears throat> oh, they, um, can, they can figure yeah. it out. But um, congrats, congratulations. Yeah, well, yeah. So anyways, Lance, whoever I need to give it to, like if you don't have it, just make sure you don't have it. If so, we'll we'll give it away. So <laughs> Thanks, PH. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, he's I, asking he you to check, to check his, his Steam. steam. Well, what a guy. During the what, show. What a he's guy. He's like, check my Steam. Do, do not sure check his Steam. Do, do not check his Steam during the show. All right, we got to wrap this thing up here, Brian. Um, I do want to say... Um, Happy Hanukkah to everybody uh, celebrating. Tonight is the first night of Hanukkah. The, the, the first night has already begun. So anybody celebrating Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. I believe uh, somebody's going to attack. Eight days, I believe, is what... Eight nights, I believe, is what you have in Hanukkah. So um, happy Hanukkah to you. And uh, I mean, there it is. It's the uh, first night of Hanukkah. Yep. All right. Uh, make, yeah, make sure you go to our website. Get on our Discord. Uh, come join us. A lot of people will be playing games over Christmas and, and having uh, maybe breaks from work, from school, whatever it is. Wanting to get away from your family for a bit. Fact. Come join our Discord so that you can <laughs> so that you can uh, come hang out with us. We'll be playing a lot of games. A lot of people will be off work. So we'll have a lot of fun. Uh, and also, if you're looking for notifications before the show starts, maybe for our Friday night game night, go join our Steam group. Uh, if also we have a nice uh, thing on our website. If you're looking, wanting to get notifications of new episodes of the show, we have a sign up by email option there. But of course, you're more than welcome to sign up for our RSS feeds on your phones, uh, tablets. I'm sure you can get a, a PC uh, if you're looking for the audio only. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, follow us on Twitch. All those things that you can do to support the show. Um, it's greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. And if you can find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, or you can check out my blog, biteoftech.com. And that is it for me. Hope all of you have a good weekend. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. You got a little uh, snowy. Um, I see <laughs> snow and everything crazy going across the screen. Um, yes. So, uh, of course, join us in our Discord. All those links, our website, infectionpodcast.com. You can support the show. Click the support tab. Uh, subscribe to our podcast. If uh, And a quick note again, if somebody maybe didn't hear the beginning of the podcast, if you listen to the show on TuneIn on iOS... You cannot load the show. TuneIn is aware. They're working on an issue. It's out of our hands. So we will, uh, we're will. we going to keep you updated on that. Uh, but on Android and I, uh, Android and PC, TuneIn, the Infection Podcast, does still work. So just be aware of that. We are aware. So, um, But if you know another app that stops working, another website, another service that stops working, please, please, please let us know so that we can get in touch with them or uh, fix it on our own end. Brian, thank you very much, and um, I will see you, you, ladies and gentlemen. We will see. I'll see you next Tuesday from New York. It's going to be. Uh, I still haven't figured. I should, probably should have thought about how we're going to produce that, but um, <laughs> we'll have a show from New York next Tuesday. So uh, we'll see you guys then, and of course, we'll see you tonight. Uh, excuse me, Friday night for our game night. We'll be playing the PUBG test server. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Infection, the survival podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Nicholas M. Craig. Visit our website, infectionpodcast.com. Have a great week, everybody.